changes or additions to the agenda as presented? Yes, there are. Uh, give me one second to set the audio. Kyle and Nat, I'm going to unmute the two of you and I am muting uh, everybody else. So raise your hand uh, if you need to raise your hand uh, virtually or make it known. You can say in chat if you need to be unmuted for anything. Uh, but I have turned off the ability for people to unmute themselves. Um, so changes and additions. We have a few contracts to sign before July 1st uh, that came in since our last meeting. The ambulance uh, with NEMS, the sheriff's contract, uh, CAI technology for our GIS service, um, have all come in. We are working on, uh, we don't have it ready to sign, but the, I wanted to give the update on Clay Hill and the project we're doing with UVM. Uh, and we don't have anything ready to sign today, but we are going to very soon. And the turnaround on it is pretty short. So I'm gonna ask for permission to sign for that grant agreement when it comes in. Uh, and then we also have a fireworks permit. Okay. Anyone got anything else they wanted to add? Doug? On number eight, the river access at the Holmes Meadow. I, I want to report on the, the talc mill, the status at the talc mill property, river access, please. Okay. Uh, I'm not seeing Nat or, or Kyle, so I guess they're just going to have to speak up if they got something to add. Yeah, I'm here. I mean, the, we were going to talk about abatement at this meeting. Is that going to happen during the treasurer's report? That, that's part of Rosemary's report. Good. Yeah, that, that was my understanding. Okay. I'm so, sorry, Brian, did you mention um, the Alliance proposal? Sorry, which proposal? Um, belonging for Justice's proposal. Uh, I believe that that's one of the things that we're going to cover under the uh, the town stand on anti-racism is we've gotten a couple different suggestions about what to do. And I, I think, and I, I think the chair agrees on kind of lumping them into one heading is probably going to be the easiest way for us to organize it um, rather than having to stick things on at the end of the agenda as, as new items. Um, kind of expanding the one we've already, we have, uh, and it all generally fits under that heading. Okay. I just want to make sure that that's, that's the intention yeah. to discuss it. Okay, good. Anyone got anything else? No. Okay. Is the board prepared to approve the meeting minutes of June 1st? Uh, yeah, there's a typo in them. I think it says that it's June 3rd at the top of those minutes. Otherwise, they're good. Okay, so you'd make a motion with that change? Yes. Do we have a second? Second. I got a second, and I assume Donna is on the call, right? Yes. Okay. So I'm sure she heard the motion in the second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. Uh, Rosemary, you're up. Okay, there we go. Go ahead, Rosemary. Okay, I sent the budget status report to all the board members. And to date, we are at eighty three percent of budget has has been spent.
with two weeks left in the month, do you anticipate getting somewhere near 100%? Probably well, we got that greater bill that I, have, I haven't seen yet, so. Okay. Like 25 to 30,000, I believe. No, not gonna be anywhere near that high. You don't think so? Oh no, it's gonna be around 5,000. Oh, good. Oh yeah, that's great news. Yes. What's that based on, Mike? Talking to Rick LaHuya today. Pretty good source. Yeah. Him and uh, Tim Sterner did the work on it. Uh -huh. And we need to thank them and also Ray, uh, because Ray stopped that uh, grader in time and saved that transmission from total destruction. And uh, so all three of them did an excellent job. Ray not only stopping it, but Rick and Tim doing the job. At a real reasonable price for the town, too. Sorry, that's kind of out of order, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Rosemary. Okay, and um, current delinquent taxes. Um, as of today, we have $136,253 still outstanding. And that's uh, just about the same as last year and a little below the year before. They're both at 97 percent collected good and i have a um loan quote for the tractor that we're purchasing from the union bank it's for five years at seventy eight thousand five hundred thirty eight dollars for an interest rate of 1.85 percent and i'd like approval on that tonight so we can have it What's the board's pleasure? Be looking for a motion. I wish I hadn't approved the first purchase myself, but that's neither here nor there. She's got a message from Kyle saying she keeps getting uh, bumped off, so I don't know that she's here or not. Okay. Well, Don is asking if you can repeat the figures, and I would appreciate that too. On the loan agreement? Yeah. Uh, $78,538. And what's the rate? 1.85%. What's the bank? Union Bank. Well, you need a signature from it, from the chair? At this point, we just need board approval. Motion to approve. Okay. Uh, we'll have the loan documents ready for uh, your next meeting. Good. So we got a motion. We got a second to approve the union bank note for the tractor. Do we have any discussion? Did Carl ever make it back on? Uh, she just did. Okay. It looks like she's still in the process of connecting. Okay. Give her a second. Let me know when she's. Hi. Told. I hey, think I'm, Oh gosh, I'm on my phone now. My, I, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> uh, we just had a motion and a second uh, for a purchase, uh, getting a Union Bank note for the purchase of a tractor at, I believe, it was around seventy-eight thousand, at one point eight five percent interest. And any more discussion on that motion? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Believe the ayes have it. The ayes do have it. Um, question, do we, I think we might need to do a roll call vote. Uh, because uh, that is correct. Okay, I'll I'll call your name and uh, indicate your yay or nay. Doug, yay. Kyle, yay. Mike, nay. Nat, yay. And the chair votes in favor. Motion passes. Go ahead, Rosemary. Okay, um, Nimrick can do property record cards 
for online. The setup fee is $250 and the yearly cost is $500. This will be very helpful to the attorneys and real estate appraisers. And they can link this to the town website. Is that something the board is interested in doing? Oh yeah, sounds like a deal. Agree. You need so a formal motion and yes, please. So okay. move, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion is second. Any more discussion? What is the information that goes on these cards? Is it just a typical card, you know, that we're familiar with? It's it's different than what you've been used to. There's less information on it from the old um property tax cards, but it will be helpful for the appraisers and the attorneys when they do their title searches. Any other it's discussion? Completely different. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The eyes have it. I also have a outside consumption permit for Moog's joint. Um, let's see. That just, that just needs our approval and you sign it, right? Yes. Okay. You're just asking for their additional out front where they put those picnic tables. Right. They already have one for the back, back side. They're just asking for the front side now. Brian, there are a lot of people on the call tonight. I just want to make sure that everybody has good instructions on how they can raise their hand or, or um, comment. If so uh, raising your hand on a computer, is whether it's a cell phone or an iPad or anything else, is going to be under your, uh, your control, your chat control. So you'll have a bar that's got you know, mute, show video, stop video, security, and so on, and uh, the raising hand is in that panel. Um, if you're on a phone, dial star nine to raise your hand. Uh, either way will allow you to comment on anything. If you want to comment on a particular item, you know, raise your hand some way. Uh, if you are unable to, uh, typing something into the chat uh, will We'll do our best to call on people for during the chat also. Um, are you, know, you monitoring that? Staying on top of everyone. Are you monitoring that, Brian? Because I, I am. I don't typically see those. I, I've got the chat open and I'll, I'll do my best to stay on top and, and keep track of everybody who's waiting. Okay. So looking for a motion to approve moves outdoor uh, consumption. So moves. Got a motion. Usual. Do we have a second? Second. And Rosemary, as I understand it, this is part of the one of the emergency orders that allows for this that typically would not be allowable. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm confused by that. Typically, they'd have to have a fenced-in area, and it can't be accessible from for the public. You know, it's very restrictive on outdoor consumption, but they really relaxed that during this COVID-19 by order of the governor. But when that when that order is done, which at some point we hope it is, this continues on. Is that correct? I don't believe so. I think this will get rescinded when that happens. Rosemary, can you correct me on that? I believe that's that what was, will happen. It will go back to the original um, outside consumption permit. Right. With the way the governor has it structured, with the you can have an open container in your car basically now. I don't know how we can, <laughs> you know, I, I'm just very confused by the whole thing. If this is temporary and it gets rescinded with his order, um, uh, that seems fine to me. If, it, if it, I just, I think the whole thing's a bit confusing. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Mike. 
Do you want to tidy it up uh, and change the motion to reflect that? That this is just temporary? Uh, ooh, that's, that's probably within our jurisdiction to put that kind of a condition on it. Okay, I'll change it to temporary then during the COVID crisis until the governor rescinds it. Okay, that's your friendly amendment. Who seconded the motion? I did. I will accept that. You'll accept that. Thank you, Doug. Any other discussion? There were some questions in chat. Comments in chat. Uh, uh, Allison, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. Um, you've got some pretty good points to raise. And uh, yeah, uh, go ahead, Allison. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, Allison Link from Healthy Lamoille Valley. I don't, can you hear me and see me? Yes. yes. Oh, wonderful. Um, yeah, we've been doing a lot of work on this topic. We uh, definitely have the notion that, you know, these are temporary, temporary executive order, but there may be a push in the future to move um, you know, these to permanent. So we have some resources that were in the works actually as this was happening. So I was, uh, you know, got to a couple of folks before the meeting, but uh, I think it's important to consider, you know, the impact, uh, you know, of the um, outdoor consumption license, the thinking that the town puts into um, you know, impact of substances overall, and like they're a big picture of vision kind of questions, but then there's also specific kinds of questions of, you know, the specific location, um, is it roped off? You know, the town has the power to make decisions on, uh, you know, time frame, uh, on, on making sure that it is uh, closed in, is it also a, a tobacco free space or not? Um, you know, making sure it's, you know, if it is clear, clearly defined that there's good signage, uh, if there's clear access. I put some notes in here um, in the chat box, you know, how could the people exit? How is it monitored? Um, is there lighting after dark? Lots of things to really consider, um, you know, with, with the licenses in general, not specific to this one license, but, you know, it, but in general. Um, Jessica added also how many outside tables there are, you know, and just what, what is their thinking and, and their plans? I think definitely when you mentioned about the temporary nature, that that's valuable um, to, to bring it back because it, there's a lot of gray and, and we're, you know, navigating this along the way, but these are some of our recommendations for select boards to, and towns and, and um, you know, residents and towns to consider at this point what the impact might be um, also on social norming for youth and others who are in the areas where this would happen, where the, um, where the uh, leak over or wh wh where it goes in, where folks wind up leaving or going into. And it's not just about the outdoor consumption, but also the uh, curbside alcohol and delivery, which also is part of the executive order um, and right now is temporary. And um, you know, and, and that's currently not monitored and, you know, how, how towns also have say in, in what that looks like. So I don't, I'd love to hear any questions or help in any way, but we do have some considerations to think about. Yeah, we'll open it up to any board members got questions of Allison. Allison, are you comfortable with the change motion that we made? With the temp making it a temporary, yes. I, I, from my perspective, I think temporary is very um, important. I think you may consider, though, some of what you might be interested in pursuing. Um, you know, as other licenses come up, and as you know, it won't it might it won't be just one. And what you're thinking uh, as like a strategic thinking on the topic, and that you might consider some of the. Uh, other questions I put here, like to say what time frame, how many tables will be there, how might it be monitored, gather a little more information so that you feel comfortable. I mean, I, that, I feel like um, it's most important that the community feels comfortable, that the select board feels comfortable with how this plays out and that it's done in a thoughtful way. Um, the executive order came on and a lot of businesses, you know, have been scrambling to 
you know, make ends meet. And I totally understand that. Um, I just want folks to make sure that, um, you know, that there's still a process that this can be done in a thought, in a thought, in a thoughtful way. Thank you. Your organization is very important, by the way. Glad to be here and help. I know Jessica Bickford, our coordinator, is a Johnson resident and is on. And you know, we're we're always here to support all of all of the um, substance prevention related uh, you know needs of the community. Thank you too, Jessica. Thanks. Thank yeah. you, Allison. Go ahead. Go ahead, Matt. And if I jump in, um, I I really I like and I've, I've mentioned this to Allison and Jessica in the past, at least Allison that. That strategic thinking part, I think for me, would be really beneficial that there's some sort of a larger discussion. I feel like operating as an official on the um, Liquor Control Board, which I never really considered that I'd be on when I ran for select board, um, all of a sudden I've just got these licenses like, do you want to approve this? Do you want to vote for it? Do you not want to vote for it? I don't know what, what should we be considering here. And, and um, that we, we kind of uh, make these decisions kind of one off. It just doesn't seem like there's a, a greater a greater plan or a greater vision, which is also gonna be um, impactful and important when, as uh, marijuana becomes more and more legal. So um, I'd like to, at a future date, not too far off, have that sort of strategic discussion, maybe maybe moderated or, or hosted by Health and the Loyal Valley. I don't know, but I just think that's a really important piece and I appreciate that. So noted. Anyone else? Uh, before we take a vote on that, is there anyone out there that you're seeing a hand up, Brian? I don't think so. Diana in chat did have a comment that uh, she's seen that the parking area has been quite full um, and, and is concerned that it, as capacity, serving capacity increases, uh, you know, that it could be unsafe because of the large number of people attending and, you know, you don't wear masks when you're eating. Um, with that one, I've spoken to Tom Moog about it and he kind of shares our concerns on that. Um, you know, he is mindful of how many people he puts in the space. Um, but you know, and, and right now he's below capacity. I'm not exactly sure why they have quite as many cars. Like what, what the, how that's ending up the case. I don't know if people are just not carpooling or, or, or what, but yeah, uh, I was there on Friday and there were, it was not especially crowded, but the parking lot was full. Isn't this, um, this is Doug. Isn't this a kind of a substitute for the ability to have uh, the, the the capacity inside? And if it's really COVID-19 related, um, and we had a liquor license, and there was a certain, you know, they had a certain amount of consumption uh, that was allowed. I, I don't, you know, is there some thought that this is going to increase the consumption of alcohol in the community? You directing that to Allison? Well, Allison or, or my good neighbor. <laughs> or Jessica. Yeah. Uh, Allison or Jessica, do you want to? Okay, Jessica, give me a second. Okay, go ahead, Jessica. Hello. Um, so there definitely is a concern. <clears throat> that um that there's not the level of monitoring um when the uh, governor put in this order he didn't um specifically um say that you had to you have to order with food but it's not a, like a one-to-one -one ratio um that servers are monitoring um so there is the potential to overserve. um the other thing that we're seeing um not just here but around the region is that um, more than one drink is being packaged in a container um, so you'll often buy a container that has four servings of alcohol in that quart jar, um, which does uh, increase the likelihood of over-serving. So it definitely is a concern. Um, we've been working on a 
um, informational piece um, with the Department of Liquor Control. Um, this uh, packets are going out in the mail this week and next to the restaurants, just really encouraging them to think about safe practices from that perspective too, um, because they're not being provided with a lot of guidance. So um, we're trying to work both ends to, to help keep our community safe. Thanks. Anyone else? Um, Eric, Kyle, um, yes. the one, the one comment I wanted to make was um, first to thank Jessica and Allison. This is this is really educational for us, and that's super good. Um, but when we do have the larger conversation, to invite um, Tom to the table so that maybe he can be part of it, just because he'll, you know, he'll have just being the owner and boots on the ground. He'll he'll I'm sure have some um some insights for us that that could be beneficial thank you so noted anyone else is the board prepared to vote so just to clarify this rescinds when uh when the governor's order is rescinded that's correct on outdoor on outdoor con on curbside consumption And FYI, the governor just extended the uh, state of emergency until July 15th. Any other comments? Uh, Allison has added that uh, Healthy Memorial Valley has resources of best practices that's available for the restaurants. Good. Thank you. Okay. Not hearing any more comments. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Go ahead, Rosemary. The only thing I have is just those abatements. I'm not sure how you want to handle that. Um, back to the liquor license. You're going to add in the the uh, the stipulation that we voted on, right? Yes. Okay, in the license. Okay. Uh, so the abatements and as I recall, you split them up by the ones that are only delinquent the fourth quarter and the ones that were delinquent for more than the fourth quarter. Yes. And if I recall from what you sent out the other day, one of them is asking for abatement on a, a late charge. He's paid it all, but it was came in a day or two late. Yes. Yes. Is that one of the ones in your first column? Yes. Okay. There's a couple of those in that first column. So you want to talk a little bit to, to the way that you've split them out? How do you want the board to look at this? Separate them? Into what? The, the two categories I put in or further than well, that? I guess that's a good question for the board. We could take these up individually, or you can take them up in the manner that Rosemary has separated them by those that were only delinquent on the fourth quarter versus the others that had delinquency for the fourth and more. The second option, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds yeah. like that's the wishes of the board. So the first uh, question, is there anything, I don't think there's anything in here, but am I wrong that it would be okay to share this so that people can follow along? It's yeah. public information. Okay. Uh, so I've got the two files, I'll pull them both up. Do you have the one Rosemary just sent out with the whole list? Uh, I believe so. Hold on, it's still. This is all the individual ones. Yeah, this is all both of the individual ones. Uh, summary abatement. Okay, here we go. Can you right. blow it, blow it up, please. Is that readable? Okay, so. What we're looking at, correct me if I'm wrong, Rosemary, is 
the first three quarters of the page or the fourth quarter only? Yes. What's the board's pleasure there for discussion? I think, Kyle, did you want to go ahead? I'm sorry. No, I'm having, I'm, uh, gosh, I'm on my phone now and I'm having a hurt. I can't see any shared screens. I'm trying to figure out how to do that. <laughs> sorry. Ah. But I think it's been our intention all along to, um, to uh, abate these penalties and in interest. Is that not correct? We pretty much had this discussion and I think we were all wanting to do this. So yes, yeah, so for the fourth quarter, correct? Correct. We're, yeah. we're voting okay. on the first three quarters of them that are just fourth quarter, yes. Exactly, yeah. Because that was our main emphasis in the beginning. Yeah, so how was your motion? I didn't catch it, Matt. I didn't really make one, but I will that okay. um, for this current list that we abate the fourth quarter penalty and in interest on these uh, late payments. Got a motion, do we have a second? Second. The motion is second. Any discussion? So I'm assuming that they all have been paid or only have some of them been paid? All the top section have been paid. Okay. Any more discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Now you want to talk to the bottom section, Rosemary, or or just take it. The numbers you're showing, that's fourth quarter only? Only, only, yes. Okay. What's the board's pleasure with those? Those don't actually fall in under our original uh, intent, do they? Can you explain what you mean by that, Mike? I'm sorry. I thought we were going to, uh, our main emphasis was the fourth quarter uh, right. to, to give a break on that on portion. Yeah. What those, would amounts, you those amounts are only the fourth quarter amounts. They, don't, they, don't, they do not include any other interest or penalties that are due. Oh, well. Well, that's a different deal. And I, th I thought you were talking about, because it says they made no payments. Yeah. Like they've made no payments at all in their taxes or? Right. But that's the only the penalty and interest on that fourth installment. Okay. So what's the board's pleasure? I wonder if we couldn't address this when the taxes have been paid other than the, rather than presently when we have all of Taxes are still mostly outstanding. Yeah, that'd be a better time to do it, I think. The rest of the board agree? I'm not seeing a distinction. I mean, they're presumably people who have, are on hard times anyway. And then COVID comes along and they get further by. We gave everybody else the break. Why wouldn't we apply that break uniformly just because they're backed up previously? Yeah, that's talking. kind of what we talked about before, uh, Nat, when we first brought this up. Yeah, but I also remember, well, I, I remember the subject coming up. I remember my position being, if people are on hard times, there's COVID's just making it worse. And to not give them a break just because they're already behind. I know I've made that point before. Yeah. I'm not saying you wouldn't give them a break. I'm just saying that you would um, hopefully encourage people to pay and ask for, or come forward with, with some payment and, and ask that the uh, penalties and interest for the fourth quarter be not uh, be forgiven. Nothing wrong with that, Matt. We're, we're not beating up on anybody for that. We're just asking well, them to pay their taxes. But I think we would not be forgiving any other past due amounts. Why would we not forgive up front these fourth quarter ones like we've done for everyone else? 
Oh, I see your point there. Yeah, that's my question too. Yeah. Okay. Are you moving? I can go along with that. I don't have a great problem with that. It seems to me to be a, a just a, a, another way of doing it. So what's the motion like? I didn't really give one. <laughs> I, I, I just said it. I didn't see any, any problem with that. Uh, but I like Doug's point too that he's made. You know, that once everything is all, you know, we're giving them time to, to do it. And hopefully things straighten out and then we could, you know, kick, take care of it another time. But I also do see the point about if we've forgiven all everybody else for the fourth quarter, why not these folks? So. I'm going to make the motion to abate these. And are you going to make it? I just did, yeah. Okay, I second it then. We have a motion and a second. Finally, any discussion? It's going to be a long night, Eric. Yes, I guess a feeling. <laughs> Hearing none, all those in favor, sing five, sing aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you, Rosemary. Go ahead. That's all that I had. Thank you. Okay. Anybody got any questions for Rosemary? Uh, do you want a motion authorizing the chair to sign the orders? Yes, please. So moved. We have a motion authorizing the chair to sign the orders. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, anybody got any questions for Rosemary? Thank you. Or you got anything well, else, Rosemary? Nope, that's all that I had. Thank you. Okay, uh, Brian Krause, I believe you're on. Yes. Uh, okay, go ahead, Brian. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. Yes. Um, I only had a few things to talk about. I don't know if everybody has my report or not. Uh, but we did take possession of our new tractor last week, and we did have a chance to run the shoulder reclaimer with that new tractor, and it works nice. It, it handles it just like we had thought it would. Um, so I, I see, you know, good things with that happening. We won't use it much more this summer because it's more of a spring item. Ideally, when the snow, you know, gets off the roads in the first month or two after that is the best time to use it. But I wanted to put it on and use it just to see how it would work. And it works nice. Good. You're uh, we got the mower. You go ahead. Curbside, or, yeah, curbside mowing with it now. Yes, we just got the mower hooked up and running today, so that'll start shortly. We'll start running that, and it's the mower works so much better on that machine because the the village the machine we were using was so. It was just so light it couldn't handle that big mower it really wasn't it really was a safety issue we're running that um, mm -hmm. we don't have that problem anymore now we got plenty of tractor for it and it'll work much better good and i i noticed brian was going to uh, talk about the uvm research project i'll just touch base on it a little bit for that project they want they're willing to give us a grant to replace a culvert on clay hill it would be the second cross culvert up from crab apple. And we would, we would take and remove that culvert and put um, some riprap down to the existing creek. And what UVM wants to do is they want to take detailed, it's like a 3D imager, you know, imagers the way I understood it, of the erosion after we do this project. And then there's a control culvert they're using up the hill from that as a control which we won't do anything to and they just want to make sure that the state's spending money to do all these projects with all these grants that we've been getting they want to make sure that it's that it's worth paying for hmm. how deep is that culvert down it's fairly deep um i'm not really sure why it's that deep it might be 
be because the water line is deeper than, you know, than I was told. Um, we are gonna, if it's possible, and if there is room between the water line and that culvert, when the new one goes in, it's gonna get upsized. And when the new one goes in, we're gonna pick that outlet up a little bit so it's not so far down the hill. Mm -hmm. And then it would just be an armored spillway, if you will, all the way to the bottom. Okay. Um, so that's that. And another thing I want to talk about was the grader. The grader turns out to be about $3,500. It was just a bearing. So there was a couple bearings replaced, a couple seals replaced. Um, Rick did a great job. It was nice using him because we did it in our shop with us helping, you know, us helping him. So that helped the cost a lot. Um, yeah, so that's a big, that's a big relief that we don't have to put a remanufactured transmission in there. Perfect. Yeah, that worked out. It worked out really nice. <laughs> and it was, it was very beneficial that Ray, you know, didn't run it when he heard that noise. And it's, it, I mean, typically we don't run stuff when you hear noises, but it was nice of Ray to pick that up, <laughs> you know, and he called me and we decided to get it back to the yard you know, as soon as we could, and he just babied it back to the yard, and that did help. It could have been, could have been a lot worse. Good. Yeah, that's, that's all I really have. Anybody got any questions for Brian? Brian, this is Kyle. I just have a question about who's responsible for grading the, um, the drive around Village Green. In the parking lot area. Well, we really don't have anything small enough to get in there to grade it. I'm not sure who's done that in the past. Okay, it's definitely be done, been done, so it must be the village. I would think so. Maybe Rafe has fit in there before, but I, I'm not sure. I'd have to, I'd have to touch base and see. It's not a okay. big area to get a grader. It's there's really no room. Uh huh. <laughs> Pretty confident that we have not tried to take the grader in there before. Yeah. Um, I couldn't say for certain how it was done in the past, but I'm, I'm quite confident that we didn't do it with the grader, if we had anything to do with it at all. Mm hmm Okay. It's in, it's in pretty rough shape, so I'd love to figure out who, who has in the past and if they could do it now. Probably, uh, check in with Meredith and see yeah. how it was done before. Okay, thank you. I spoke Anyone? with, yeah, might I speak? Yeah, go ahead, Doug. Yeah, I, I spoke with uh, Rob Moore of LCPC about this UVM study and, and the culvert, and part of the information thereafter is, uh, is pertinent to our fourth class roads uh, and, the, uh, and the repairs and uh, the, connection to the uh, to the streams up there where they're looking to find out what what the bang for the buck is and whether it makes sense to what it makes sense to do uh, in that uh, on the, the fourth class roads and, and with culverts and things like that are you are you getting you know what kind of return do you get on your money or would you be better off putting the money if you're trying to affect Lake Champlain, would you be better off putting the money elsewhere? Just for information. Uh, I'm very glad that we're, we've been able to participate in this study. That this is a really important information and uh, uh, in our future decisions locally and statewide, and it's great that, yeah, that we get to be one of the participating towns. Good. Anything else, Brian? Or anybody got any further questions for Brian? I'm guessing, Brian, you're going to stay on for the next couple of items. Uh, with regards to the class four policy? Yeah, the class four and the paving? Yes. Okay. Unless you got anything else? No, I'm all set. Okay. Brian's story, why don't you take, take over with your stuff? Okay.
So uh, first up, uh, we're opening and reviewing the paving bids. Let's see, who do I have up first? I've got uh, Pike Industries first. And do you have any of them contractors proposals online? Yes. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to share these. Okay, so you should have Pike Industries up now. Okay. Coming in with a unit price of 65 and a quarter per ton for an estimated 1,907 tons of uh, paving and reclamation and Grading at two and a quarter per square yard and 7,478 square yards for a total of 141,257.25. And I've also got Whitcomb here. Let me zoom in on this a little bit. Whitcomb is coming in at uh, for material a unit price of sixty-seven fifty, uh, one thousand eight hundred tons, and the reclamation their unit price is a dollar seventy per square yard, with seven thousand two hundred forty-two square yards. And those are the only two that we got in on time. Okay. Now, before we get into too much detail about these, we are out for a paving grant and we're due to receive a paving grant. We haven't uh, claimed one in a few years, so we're do we have a number that we would sort of expect for the grant? I was based on an early estimate for this. Uh, I can pull up our paving grant application. Uh, for the project was an estimated $142,333. So we'd be 80% of that. So we're pretty close to covering both these bids just with the grant. The both of these fall under our estimate for the grant. They wouldn't cover more than 80% of what we paid regardless of. Right. But I mean, we, uh, we budget for about a hundred thousand. So what would we just continue, go a little further with our money? Because if the grant covered the bulk of this. You're, you're uh, saying we, we get 80% of 142,000. We have to file a change uh, because we, with the grant, we had a scope of work that we applied for that Is was it still, the, it's still know, the same we scope of work? This much plot road and what we would do there. So we would have to file a change of work order if we wanted to pave a little bit more or do anything other than our, our stated scope of work. Uh, we would just be filing for uh, reimbursement for a smaller number. I mean, in the past, when we've gotten a grant like this, whatever we had budgeted, we would add to the amount of work we get done. 
Was that still the thought here? We we could easily apply for a change order, and they if they approved us for one hundred forty two thousand, and we said you know this is only you know there's a little bit less than that. We want to go for a little you know we want to add on a few more feet. That's a we're not ask our change order wouldn't be asking for more money, so it's pretty likely to be approved. Right. Okay. Uh, but it would be they could deny us uh, because we'd be asking for a change from what we'd originally applied for. I, I guess I'm just getting that we uh, the, the grant for rounding off easy numbers, let's say $100,000 we get from the grant, we budget $100,000. In theory, we could do $200,000 worth of paving. I didn't follow you there, Eric. Can you repeat that? In our budget, we uh, budgeted about $100,000 for paving. If we get a grant for $100,000, between the two of them, we should be able to accomplish about $200,000 worth of paving project. You know. Eric, you're going to have to put that 20% in that. Yeah. Uh, so you're not going to have your your full two hundred thousand, I don't think. And I, I think what we ought to do really is, uh, you know, uh, take the grant uh, and make it whole with our money, and uh, maybe keep some of our money on hand. Uh, we don't know what the future is going to going to uh, give us here this fall and next year and everything else. Uh, maybe we ought to put that on hold a little bit and uh, save a little money. Yeah, that's good note there. Note taken. Okay. I'm, that's, go ahead. I just agree with Mike. I think that's a good point. Yeah. I'm with I'm with Mike on that. Um, unless there is, uh, we have some uh, paving that would be uh, where a stitch in time would save nine. We have something falling off into the ocean. You know, hopefully we were. I, I understand we were behind in paving too. So I'm wondering. Uh, if, if there's anything calling out, so why we might want to stretch to do that? What Eric is suggesting? When would we know if we've got the grant or not? Hopefully we'll know soon. Um, and that it, my recommendation is that we delay until we know more about what's happening with the grant. Um, that it, the, you know, we believe that this is coming in, we're due but they're facing a lot of shortfalls at the state level too. So I don't know that they're going to um, Did the, uh, do everything. We can make some other requests if we're interested uh, in one of the bids, we can ask uh, for them to hold the price for us for longer. Um, How long are they indicating they would hold them? Mike says only seven days. Yeah, they're saying seven days is their normal. Thirty days for Wickham. Yeah. So we may not even know potentially for thirty days if we're going to get the grant or not, and we certainly can't do this on our dime. No, I, I think that given other budget realities, it would be inadvisable for us to uh, pay out for both of these. Um, we technically, you know, we have money uh, in our current year and we have money budgeted for next year. We could split it over two years. That, but with the reality on the ground, I don't think that's advisable. So what would the board like to do? They like to uh, ask both bidders if they would uh, uh, commit to this bid until at least we find out if we've been awarded the grant. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we can come back and visit it in 
in our next meeting if we've got if we've heard on the bid or not. Sounds good. You you indicated you had some of the bidders online. Uh, we'd invited uh, a couple of the bidders. Uh, I don't see. Oh, Brett and Gardner from uh, Pike is online. If he wants an opportunity to speak it, with the board's permission, I'd like to allow any bidders online to at least be able to address their bids. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Go ahead. Hi. Uh, good to be here. Yes, uh, Pike would, would hold the bid um, until a decision was made. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Tyler from Whitcomb is here, and in chat he indicates that he would, that Whitcomb would do the same. Okay, well, both, that's both reasonable. Okay, the board want to take any further action on this now, or wait until we find out? Wait. Okay, and thank you to both the representatives of the contractors for being here tonight. I do have a question from chat from uh, Greg Tatro. I uh, asked if the deadline uh, specified in the grant application is going to be a problem or if it's going to be extended automatically. That is going to be something that we have to have a conversation with. Uh, this was the grant application was made before we were in the middle of COVID and everything else that was happening. So uh, the the grant deadline, or like our estimated date of completion is, um, yeah, much further out than otherwise. I, I've heard that uh, some of the, the people who might do the paving for us might be it might uh, be looking for work enough that it might get done earlier uh, or on shorter notice, uh, but that's it's all highly variable so uh, I don't expect it to be a problem the grant uh, typical grant deadline for these is two years um, so I don't think that our completion date moving out would be um, probably unchanged uh, and the uh, state's uh, been as far as pretty... the, the grant is concerned it would be another change request that we would put in and say this is going to take a little bit more time than we anticipated but I don't imagine that being a problem. And the state's been pretty lenient on these deadlines because of this COVID-19, extending yeah. them. So, yeah, I, I would hope that it would not be a problem. I, I, I really would be quite surprised if they gave us a hard time on uh, a deadline when the award that we're hearing, like when we hear back for the award has been delayed as long as it has been. Uh, yeah, I, I think that would work out okay. Okay, next item up is uh, discussion on the class four road policy as presented. Does the board um, want to pa pass on I've, this? I've tonight? got a, somebody with their hand up. Uh, Offie, okay, go. You had go your ahead. hand raised. I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. That's up. Can you okay, hear me now? Yes, go when ahead, Coffee. When it comes to the bidders between Pike and uh, Whitcomb, assuming it's just not going to the lowest bidder, how are you going to decide, because there is such a difference, how are you going to decide who gets the winning bid based on the performance or who makes that decision? Which the one the select two? board will. Based on what, the performance and history or something or what? Uh, performance, uh, we may look at what they're anticipating for the work that needs to be done, how much paving is required. If we felt one of them wasn't, uh, you know, as accurate as the other, that could be a determining factor as well as the, you know, the, the bid too. Okay, great. But thank you for asking the question. Anything else, Brian, before we move on? No, I think that's everybody. Okay. And I guess I would put it to the to the board on the class four uh, highway.
do we want to pass on this tonight because of everything we get on our agenda or you want to briefly talk to it i don't think we would take the action tonight but pass uh rob moore from lcpc will be able to attend a future meeting we'll get a lot more information about uh hydrologically connected road segments which i think is going to play a pretty big factor in uh appropriate action for um, what do we need to do about uh, different road segments and which ones do we want to keep and what's the maintenance on them. I think that's a pretty essential piece and uh, I think it's appropriate for us to delay on this. Okay, I, I agree. I agree. I have a. I had a long conversation with Rob Moore, and I think one a crucial piece of information is going to be the uh, the study that Megan Rodier has been doing on the hydrologically connected roads. That's not done. It's likely to be done. It's it's not completed, um, and it, that is a major uh, factor to consider in terms of what roads would cost us to keep and which ones, uh, you know, with, with regard to that municipal general road permit that we're, that's driving us to uh, think about uh, having to spend money on roads that we aren't going to collect anything from the state for. Okay. So okay. I put it off and I, I'm just suggesting it's gonna be a longer put off than we're thinking about it won't be next next meeting right yeah i, I think we might get it on we might be able to do a small update at the next meeting but i think that there's going to be uh questions that go a little bit longer uh, i do have a question from chap about the recommended road changes and uh yes uh kim i do believe that this all the select board members and uh, that it's included in the in your packet. packet. Uh, with the recommended changes from the Planning Commission about uh, changes to roads. All right. So we're, we're tabling this for now? Yep. Okay. Building permit. Oh, that didn't make it in. All right, building permit changes. So uh, we've, I've done my best to try and accommodate the uh, changes and questions that we had at the prior meeting. I've removed quite a few sections from this. Um, Start at the top. Uh, added specifically in the exemptions that a uh, replacement of a structure with a similar structure is permitted, uh, eliminated quite a bit about what's required with the permit and added more details in the process, uh, what could be uh, the process for this uh, to run through it. and added uh, and cleaned these up a little cleaned up the permit application um well that's very simple and then we've got so the idea being that we would a person would fill out a building permit application that would go into a file here at the office 
we would give the person a notice to proceed. Um, you know, that such and such has permission from the Town of Johnson Select Board or its designee to proceed with the construction for the project applied for. And it specifies the permit that they gave to us. Um, and then they have a year to complete it. If they don't complete it within the year, uh, we would, this is just an informational permit, so we would just extend it again. That just gives us a deadline for having to um, check in with them uh, so that we've got, we can't have something that just stays open uh, permanently. Then once the project is completed, they get a, a formal informational building permit. Um, that just gives them evidence that, the, that they had a permit and it was completed. So I guess the question for the board, does this uh, fulfill what we felt were our needs? Are there still things lacking? I don't, I don't know with that overview. I, I don't think we got this ahead of time. So I, it looks like you made some changes to the introduction or the, the very top part, whatever you called it. Um, the purpose, I took out uh, reference to maintaining the rights of way and utilities and other things to uh, focus in on what we described as the equity and fairness of property taxes and uh, you know the uh, concerns Nope, and yeah, you got a fragment there. A fragment here. Yeah, I'd like to be able to look this over before we vote on it. Uh, I added a comment here. I don't think Charles asked us to read uh, 24 VSA 4413. Uh, I checked that out. I don't think that applies. Um, but the I, I'm, you know, we, we should get legal review regardless. And uh, I, I, yeah, I'm not qualified to say for a certain. So I don't think it applies, but I, I could be wrong. When you have the uh, construction replacement uh, for a, a building, a destroyed or replaced building, I think we should say, since similar structures would be like, well, it's a single family residence. I think you, you should tie that to uh, the footprint and, and the bedrooms. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay. I also, I called Brian today about this to, to give him a heads up. I think that the problem with this, there's a really good need or, or a large need for with regard to taxing on this. I think that our, our citizens will have had no experience with this and have not a, a reason to understand why it's there, how it's working. And I would suggest that that the penalties that we put in place, you know, kick in uh, six months after it's in effect. So we can be telling people, oh, have you applied for this? And there's no penalty yet. So, uh, and that, that the penalties come later. So we have more ability to do what we should do, which is, which is uh, not punish people that didn't know this and that this is a completely new structure to that, no pun intended. Yeah, I'd even get that a full 12 months. Okay. Given the building season and how it works. The Did other you... thing is that I don't like that they have to apply that, you know, this is informational. I think once we know that somebody is going to be doing things, I don't think we should terminate their right to, to do something. I believe we should ask them, and Brian and I disagree on this, I think. Uh, 
I, I think we should ask them to notify us if they're not going ahead. But what we really want to know is where we should be looking. Could, could you say that again, Doug? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Brian, can you go to the one year thing? Yes. Uh, do you want the permit or the in the administration and application? It's got the yeah. Well, so so the select board is supposed to confirm its its complete and issue an informational permit. I think that uh, when they apply, they ought to get the informational permit. You've applied and told us you're going to do this. I think that's when it ought to. Be, that's when we ought to issue the permit. And what we should ask people to do is, you've got your informational permit, you can go ahead uh, if they, and, and, say, and say, you know, if you decide not to do it, please let us know. Yeah, because all we want is a heads up that somebody's gonna be doing something and that will get the assessors, the, the headlights that somebody's doing something and they'll go check it out. If they haven't done it, well, who cares? Brian was worried, and, and, there, and there's a reason that we don't want to put our assessors out time and time and time again to be checking on these things. But I think the burden to have a permit terminate is a greater burden than, than having the our just kind of keep, keep a lookout for what might be happening there. Well, all of these permits would probably be collected, and the assessors would go out in the early spring and do a one-time drive through to all the sites. They wouldn't do them throughout the year, I wouldn't think. Well, I spoke to Robin, our uh, assessor, about it. And that's kind of how we came up with the one year. Um, yeah, and that's uh, quite a few towns that have permits like this, qualify them on, on year by year. Um, but it's, it would be the year expiration is for administrative purposes that, that they would probably go out at, in the fall and in the spring to check on uh, permits that we had that were in process. And then once it was completed, they'd close it out. Um, and having the everything expire after a year uh, is so that we have a better idea of uh, permits that are open and you know if some if it's open and somebody intends to complete it we can keep extending it out into the future there's no you know final end date on these but it would help us avoid the situation where we've got a permit issued for something that um, has been forgotten about or delayed or, or you know, a permit that we might have lost track of. I, I think that's wrong. Um, I think this is an information permit that somebody intends to do something. I don't think it's a permit. It's not a permit for them to build. And Right. And can you go back? Where do we? Where is there anything that says that they can't build it without without a uh, um, a permit, or is it or is the enforcement the monetary stuff? I think it's really just the enforcement. We say that it's. That permits are required when you are executing these actions, geez, in this line, I'm gonna delete that right now. I don't know why that one. Okay, how about, what's in A, uh, that what you were just looking at? No a building. Is, uh, no building or structure of any kind, including but not limited to houses, garages, sheds, outbuildings, retail or commercial structures, as well as enlargement or additions increase the footprint of an existing structure shall hereafter be constructed or installed within the limits of the town of Johnson without an informational permit is first obtained from the town permit officer. All right, can you go then to, um, to the penalty section? 
Yep. Right, so can, can, can we get an injunction against them building without that? Twenty four VSA nineteen seventy four A, does that uh, allow us to get an injunction against them building without getting an informational permit? Why would we do yeah. that? Well, we wouldn't we wouldn't we wouldn't we wouldn't do that. And I just I I, I just think that we, we I'm concerned about title on this. And this permit this building was bit, built without a permit, and I want to restrict this to a civil penalty and not impugn people's title to their structure. No. Thank you. Well, it sounded more like a, a zoning permit to me. Well, I think all you have to do is limit it to say that, you know, the, the, the sole remedy is a civil penalty, you know, if, if that is, but I don't know what's in 24 VSA section 1974. Well, we talked about that in the beginning of this discussion. And the word attorney was mentioned about going to an attorney uh, to get some kind of a reading on this. Now, <clears throat> initially, this started out as something extremely simple. Now it's morphed into something that looks like backdoor zoning to me. And uh, I think we ought to turn this over to the Planning Commission for them to dissect it. Do you think they have the expertise for this? I bet they have as much as we do. It would still come back to us and be our decision. And I see, I don't see it as being the typical planning commission role of forward planning and community at years out and things like that. Well, as, as the chairman, he's still on, isn't he? Yep. No, I, I would agree with, with Doug that um, it, if we can come up with something we're comfortable with as an ordinance and, and adopt it, then maybe ask the planning commission to to look at what we have and see if there's a another way to do what we need to get accomplished in a different way. But well, you know that could take time, and we need to get something out sooner than that. Well, why? To help the assessors. Well, is there is this a problem? A real super big problem? Well. Remember when Robin came and talked to us about all the issues they were having? W one place, I recall. Well, it was one that she missed. And the, the, the management from Nemrec also appeared and said that, you know, this was a real challenge for them, that they were spending a lot more time on Johnson uh, because it was difficult for them to track. And it was also, it's also a safety issue that I think we should take very seriously. I agree with that, Kyle, for sure. I mean, we've been through all of this. We've been through this decision-making matrix before. I, I'm, I'm strongly in favor of this. I'm just trying to tighten it up so that it, you know, make it as simple and, and, and tighten it up so it doesn't improve fringe on people more than necessary to accomplish our goals. Exactly. Is Charlie here tonight? He is. Uh, Charlie has asked to speak as soon as the board is ready for public comments. I'd like to hear him now. Is the board complete with their com comments? Okay, Brian, why don't you go ahead and open it up to Charlie. Okay. All right, Charlie. Uh, go ahead, Charlie. So a couple of comments. First of all, <clears throat> I find the assessors are specious. Everything I know about real estate appraisal or real estate valuation, a bathroom is worth a hell of a lot more than a bedroom. A kitchen remodel is worth a hell of a lot more than a bedroom. This, this dwelling on this bedroom is, is a specious argument. 
I own property in other states and deal with assessors there. I've read enough articles that when you <clears throat> remodel a house or do something to a house, they don't even mention the value added from a bedroom. They do, and do mention the value added from a kitchen or a bathroom. So I, I'm really skeptical of the comments from the assessor or appraiser, whatever they're called now. Second item I'd like to point out to you folks is that <clears throat> Uh, you can expect a petition drive on this, and I would ask that you would hold off until the state of emergency is lifted so that we can go to door to door collecting signatures after the pandemic, after the uh, state of emergency is lifted. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Charlie. Is there anyone else? Brian, I've got a couple of questions. Uh, Donna asks, uh, don't equity and fairness mean the same thing? Similar, but not the same. Um, yeah, I, I think it, it's similar, not the same. And I'm, I'm, I guess I would, I could take it either way on this. Uh, But no, I don't think they mean exactly the same thing. Um, and Diana Osborne says, is, if approved, how will people be informed that this is the, uh, let's see, if this is approved, how will people be informed that this process now exists? And does the that method need to be included in the policy? Um, one that relates to two, ideas um, we would want to do a kind of additional information campaign we would want to try and reach out to as many people as possible possibly doing a, a mailing to the town wide something like that to really get people's attention that this is now uh, once the ordinance has passed and that this is now law um, the other thing is Doug mentioned, and I think Nat, there's some general agreement about it, and that would be written into the policy about a uh, forgiveness period from enforcement penalties that, uh, you know, that this would be enacted and then there would, it wouldn't take effect until a certain amount of time after uh, it had been uh, approved. So I hope that answers your, your question, Diana. And of course, not having a penalty for a year, that would allow the ordinance to be published in the town report. Yeah. Is there anyone else on this? So what's the board's pleasure here? Do you, you wanna get a cleaned up copy and then look at it again at our next meeting? Yes. Okay. Yes, please. So why don't we go ahead, Brian, do that. Uh, one, I also got a comment from Robin Chapman, our assessor. Uh, Does she, she want to speak? out that I had the sentence fragment in the first paragraph. Um, then she also uh, uh, mentions that, um, at one Does point, when we're to... talking about buildings, we extend that to be anything with a roof. And uh, she. Brian, would she like to speak? She's not here. Uh, this is. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry. Th this is an email she sent me actually a couple <laughs> days ago. Okay. Uh, that she thinks that we should remove roof from that definition and work on our definition for building a little bit to include things like decks. Can you, uh, when we have a cleaned up copy, share her input with us as well? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, stand on anti-racism. Okay. 
I'm going to fix the sharing uh, so that we're back to the statement. And I, I think the first thing we're going to tackle is the draft statement that we, excuse me, that we received on uh, yeah. a stand for anti-racism. Uh, so that we've received a, a proposed draft for um, a stand on anti-racism uh, statement reading. Uh, it's up on everybody's screen uh, that backs up our inclusivity statement and uh, the fight against system systematic systemic racism, uh, white supremacy, and the historic oppression of the black community. We believe that Black Lives Matter and remain fully committed to being proactive as leaders in standing up to and publicly rejecting any racism and bigotry in our community. We are committed to listening and learning from our Black, Brown, and concerned citizens. We are committed to working with the Lamoille County Sheriff's Department and our legislators to deconstruct all policies and laws that create and amplify racism and poverty in our community. We are committed to continuing to fund and organize educational programming on racial justice and racial bias for all Johnson residents and surrounding communities. Uh, in quoting our inclusivity statement, we reject racism, bigotry, hatred, and violence in all its forms. Okay, Brian, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of people wanna comment on this, so I'm gonna turn it over to you because you can see their hands up and all that, and you wanna yep. manage turning mics on. Okay. Uh, the first comment I have is uh, Afi uh, in chat. Afi, do you want to speak to this? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you, Afi, if that's all right. No, that doesn't seem to be working. Okay, I've got you unmuted. Go ahead. Okay, let me put myself back on camera. Uh, okay, to say that, um, you know, we believe that Black Lives Matter, obviously. I'm Black, blah, blah. But black, it, it, to be realistic, we all know that Black lives and all lives matter. Okay? To cave in, just to go on and on and on and on and say Black Lives Matter and just completely ignore the reality that all lives matter is an affront to everybody, and uh, it, it's just not realistic. You know, it's caving in to people who are exercising a certain amount of power at this time, uh, using a certain amount of uh, leverage with, over white guilt. You know, <laughs> and who are saying, you know, uh, it's just not right. You shouldn't cave in. Not only do Black Lives Matter, of course. All lives matter. And you're alienating a large section of our country who is not black, and even a lot of black people, like just saying only black lives matter. That, that's racist. You hear what, you know what I just said? That's racist. Okay? That's my comment. Is there any other? Ask yeah, they, anyone else raising their hand, Brian? Uh, let's see. Rob asks in chat. Rob, uh, do you want to speak? I'll go ahead and give you an opportunity. Okay, Rob, go ahead. Uh, I was just wondering why we need the additional, I mean, I, I guess I thought the uh, inclusivity statement said it all. It says right in the first three words, we reject racism. I don't, why do we need more? I, I mean, I thought that's what the inclusivity statement was passed last year for, to cover like all of this stuff. I don't, I don't understand when we have to uh, speak to each thing like specifically as it seems to happen, you know, in time. That's all. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, and then I've got Athena Park has asked to speak. Uh, okay, I'm trying to unmute you now, Athena. Okay, go ahead. Um, I was just wondering if it made sense to change the sentence, we are committed to listening and learning from our black and brown and concerned citizens and adding um, indigenous after the word brown so that we are um, including folks who, who are native, um, but of, of all colors. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So Brian, um, yep. can, I, can I speak for a second? Yeah, absolutely. Great, thank you. Um, so this is, um, this is Kyle, and I'm really sorry that I cannot actually see everybody um, and that my computer is, is acting up, so I'm on my, I'm on my phone. Um, but this is, this is a statement that I wrote um, and proposed uh, that we discuss tonight. Um, it's a commitment statement that I wrote in response to uh, specifically to black Americans that are being murdered every day in our country at the hands of white police. It's um, a commitment to continuing to uphold the work that we've already done for the people of Johnson around racial justice that I hope we you know, all feel proud of, which is, um, Rob, what you just referred to, the inclusivity statement. It's a commitment um, to yeah, listening and learning and believing black, brown, and, and I would, um, Athena, I appreciated your comment about indigenous uh, voices in our community. It's a commitment to um, accountability for myself, um, the select board and the people and the institutions um, that we elect and employ to create policies and enforce laws. Um, it's a commitment to working with our legislators and the Lamel County Sheriff's Department to dismantle and reimagine um, the very policies that for centuries have intentionally and unintentionally marginalized and suppressed black people. It's a commitment to, to continue to challenge our own implicit and explicit bias um, and how we bring them to this table. And it's a commitment, most importantly, to um, using, and I'm speaking about the select board, our positions of power and our white privilege to make meaningful and bold action to not only reject racism, but also to change the very systems that perpetuate it. So for me, this is a very proactive, um, positive statement that, that uh, outlines what I feel are the, you know, the necessary next steps in our work as leaders in this town. Um, and I think it is, um, if, you know, to, to, um, to echo what Bo Yang um, said in our last community Zoom call that that it's really it's um, it's actually for many um, black people in this country it's very it's very um, it's very hurtful to say all lives matter when Right now, historically and currently, it had that black lives have not mattered in this country um, in the same way. So um, one of the ways that um, I find it helpful to, to understand that is, is to, um, and, and Bohr said this as well the other day, was to add a two at the end of Black Lives Matter, so the T-O-O. -O. So, of course, all lives matter. We're not, I don't think anyone is saying that, that somebody's life does not matter, but black lives matter too. And that's a really important thing to say. It's a really important distinction. And, um, and I, yeah, so that's, that's where I'm coming from with this statement. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Jen Burton has asked to speak. Oh, 
Hey, um, I, sorry, I finally figured out I had to unmute myself. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to use an analogy. Hopefully I can do this articulately. Um, but first I want to thank Kyle um, a lot for bringing this forward. I think it's really um, important and I support it. Um, there, there's a thing that's been going around the internet. I'm so sorry to refer to the, it this way, but it's about a house being on fire. So when somebody's house is on fire, you don't say, but what about my house? You don't say, but what about all the other houses? Because you need to deal with the problem at hand, which is one person's house being on fire. And that is a pretty nice analogy for looking at why people say black lives matter, because they're the ones who are <laughs> being challenged right now and whose house is on fire and they're the ones who need help and support. It's not everybody else's house that's on fire. That, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and Beth Foy, I, I've got you up next for comment. Okay, go ahead, Beth. Um, I just really want to quickly want to say that I think that um, as a town select board, you should be very careful about calling out specific groups of people. I think the inclusivity statement is awesome. I fully support it. I Anyone who knows me personally knows that I hurt for Black America. I truly hurt for them. But um, I also know that there are a lot of issues in our society. Um, you know, and one that is not the same and not equatable right now is women's rights. Um, but it could be, you know, in 20 years from now. So I just want, I just want to, um, I fully support, by the way, I will actively work um, toward anti-racism personally, um, that I have every intention of doing so in everything I, every ounce of my being. Um, and I constantly challenge myself on my own biases. I take bias tests regularly. Um, but I think that as a town, the statements you write really matter. And I think you have to be careful about um, calling out specific groups of people. So um, Kyle, I support your efforts, um, but I am not sure that I support this particular effort as it relates to the town. I fully support it outside of the town. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we had a comment in chat from uh, Jeff Bickford. Uh, Jeff, I'm going to try and unmute you and give you a chance to share that. Uh, okay, Jeff, go ahead. Sorry about the terrible lighting. Um, <laughs> What I most appreciate about this effort and what I think sets it apart from the inclusivity statement is um, really, to me, is what's found a bit further down. We're committed to continuing to fund and organize educational programming on racial justice and racial bias for all Johnson residents and the surrounding communities, as well as the paragraph of See, it's hard to read when I have the chat box over it. There we go. And the commitment to working with the Lamont County Sheriff's Department and legislators to deconstruct policies and laws that create and amplify racism and poverty in our community. Um, the, the thing I said in chat is just, you know, the, what I really, um, what I think sets us apart is that this is a distinct effort in terms of trying to identify and then um, correct things that are within the town's control that may contribute to systems um, of oppression. And uh, that can absolutely, it, it may not necessarily only apply to people with black skin or brown skin. Um, I, you know, echo Athena's comments about uh, indigenous persons. Um, and I apologize for the audio, I have cats. Uh, but, you know, that's, that I think is the strength of this, is that it's this commitment to are there systems within the town's control that perpetuate racism? Let's identify them, then let's do the work to fix them. And so from that perspective, I do support this. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, 
Zoe Hoyer, I've got, I see a comment from you. Uh, I'm going to give you an opportunity uh, to speak to, to the group. I, I'm Not everybody can see the chat, uh, so I am usually, when you have a comment in chat, I am asking you generally to repeat it uh, for people calling in who can't can't see what's going on in chat. Uh, so Joy, go ahead, please. Yeah, hi, thanks. Um, honestly, I just, I wanted to say like as a business and, and a person in the town, I just, I wanna be able to communicate and to say as my own business and my own person, I wanna be able to put that out into the world the way that I would like to put it out in the world. And I wanna work on myself just like Beth was saying, but I really do feel that the inclusivity statement is a good way to be for the town. And um, yeah, that's, that's really all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, I think that's everybody I've got. Uh, Jackie uh, has asked to speak. Okay, Jackie, give me a second. Okay, Jackie, go ahead. Hey, thank you, Brian. Um, I think the statement is really phenomenal. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Kyle, for writing it. Um, I mean, I'm gonna say the obvious, we are at an historic uh, moment in our country's history. Um, a couple of people are talking about their personal views, I'll personally do this or I'll personally do that. This is a community statement. What people want to do on their own is fine, but as a community, um, this is our way uh, to speak to our beliefs and our values and our intended actions. And um, I, I think it's a terrific statement. Um, I, I wish Bo Yang was here. I wish some of the people who are commenting tonight and offering up their own opinions um, had an opportunity to hear Bo Yang speak last week. She is an expert. She's the executive director of the Human Rights Commission in the state of Vermont. Her opinions hold a lot of weight with me. And um, her expertise, if she was in on this conversation and she heard people saying things like, Black Lives Matter is a racist statement, I think she would be aghast as I am. Um, it's a wonderful statement. I support it a thousand percent. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Do we have anyone else, Brian? Uh, I've got a couple people that have that might have more comments if we want to offer a second round. Well, let me ask the board. We've got a statement in front of us. What's the board's pleasure with it? If anybody else wants to speak, let them, and then we can take our vote. Okay. I'll say. Uh, Hello. Go ahead, Matt. Go ahead, Matt. Um, it's an anti-racism statement. It's um, it's not hard to support this. Um, I think Jackie actually said something that really caught my attention. We're at an historical moment in 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 our country's history, and um, I think we really need to pay attention to the systemic racism that's happening around us. Um, I know for certain that my life has never been uh, diminished. Uh, by recognizing the worth of another. And um, this is a really easy statement to, to vote for. And uh, I, I, with, uh, well, I'll let Kyle make the motion. So are we well, offering a second round of comments? Well, let me see if the board wants to take action. I would like to address this if I might. Go ahead, Doug. I, you know, through through my time, I've, I've watched uh, you know, various groups that before my time and, and while 
while I've been on this planet in this country, uh, move to the country, make progress, become, go, go through the cycle of, of, of immigrants and the people that I see that have been held back and it's the structural held back are the black and uh, or the most held back are, are black people and indigenous people. There are structural things that we have not recognized. We don't see the daily hurdles. On my way down tonight, I was listening to uh, NPR and the chair of the Atlanta Federal Reserve was making what is essentially this statement. I agree strongly with it. So is the board prepared to adopt it or do you want to open it up for uh, more comments? I move that we adopt this statement as written with one change, which is, um, I forgot the word discrimination in the last sentence uh, that quotes the inclusivity statement. So um, we reject racism, bigotry, discrimination, hatred, and violence in all its forms. And then I would also be open to adding um, indigenous people as Athena suggested after um, Brown. So we got a motion with changes. What do we have a second? Second. Got a motion second. Any more discussion? If I if I might, Eric, um, there's a there's a bit about um, an important bit about Lamoille County Sheriff's Department in here. Um, I I know that you talk a lot with Roger and, and I do too. Well, I don't know that I talk a lot with Roger, but I have a, a I think a respectful relationship with him, um, and I've been in some conversation with him on these issues in the, in the last weeks, um, getting more information on what policies are in place, um, what practices are in place, and um, what the law enforcement community as a whole in Vermont, including the Sheriff's Department, is doing um, to what they're calling modernize and, and to really um, respond, I think, in a very positive way to um, to these sorts of actions and and, and wanting to be um, more accountable to uh, to the public and so I, I expect in in the days and weeks ahead we'll be hearing more about that and, and hopefully having more opportunity to discuss these issues directly with our law enforcement thanks yep anyone else seeing none. All those in favor signify saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. I also believe there's some other things tied in with this that were going to be brought up. Yeah, uh, okay. one thing. Kyle, can you say again where discrimination was supposed to go in the quote? Yes, after bigotry. After bigotry, before hatred. Correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, I made that correction in a uh, working copy, so we'll be able to put that up on uh, website and social media. Thank you. And, and you got the indigenous people, correct? Yes. Sure. Right. Perfect. That one, I got the discrimination. I knew it was in the quote, but I, I couldn't yes. place where in the quote it was supposed to go. So, yes. thank Great. you. Thank All right. Brian, who was going to bring in the other topics? Uh, I, I got an email from uh, Belonging for Justice asking that the, requesting that the town, uh, all right, give me one second, I've got this here. Uh, they are, as proactive citizens of Johnson who have led on issues of racial justice and anti-racism in our community, we are requesting in solidarity with the local, state, national, and global movement, that the Black Lives Matter flag be flown at the town of Johnson Town Hall. Uh, we request that the board consider and vote on this proposal at their next meeting. So moved. Second. Um, we have a little bit of a problem with that. 
It's not our flagpole. It is a shared property maintained by the village. No, it's on the village property and it's a village uh, flagpole. The town has no interest in it. We never, it was built for the fire department originally. So I guess the, the motion would be mute. The request would need to go to the village trustees. Sure, we could find a place to put a flag up in town. I mean, that would be the best place for it, but. There are three, three flagpoles there. There are two flags up. One of them is the Vermont state flag, which is in tatters, um, which I've asked to be replaced. Not knowing that it was a village thing, I assumed it was a joint property. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's an empty flagpole. Um, if, we don't, if we don't own it, then we don't own it. So I would ask that the motion in the second be withdrawn. And whoever uh, the belong for justice, would you reply to that, uh, Brian, and let them know that they need to make the request to the village trustees? Okay. And was there another request that came in? Yes. Uh got one from Shane Spence. Can uh, sorry, can I just go back to the flagpole? <laughs> um, this yeah, this just seems kind of crazy to me that we have no no it it's in front of a joint owned building, but we have no uh control over the flagpole or no say in it um can can we revisit that <laughs> uh i guess i guess it sounds like there's nothing we can do now which also seems crazy but um yeah i i that's that well, that just that seems very bizarre <laughs> where the flags are is what was originally village property. And that's where the village used to have their water and light department. And then the fire department took it over. At some point around the same time, the town and village both acquired, uh, I can't remember the uh, lady we acquired the house from, but anyhow, that's where we built the municipal office. So where the municipal office is, Somewhere between that building and the flagpole is where the property line is. So the village owns half of the municipal building. However, we do not own anything of the firehouse or where the flagpoles are. Oh, that's <laughs> okay. Your request can be brought to the village trustees as well as to the select board. We're not the only yeah. the only municipality in town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what was the second or the next request that we had, Brian? Uh, that was for, hmm. sorry, having a little bit of trouble bringing this up. I've got to, sorry, I've got to stop sharing. I'm having trouble bringing this screen up. So I just want to throw in another comment while you're doing that, Brian. I, there's uh, such wild-eyed wild -eyed radicals as Mitt Romney are out on the streets saying that Black Lives Matter. It, it um, really, I think, demonstrates that this isn't really a, a, a left-wing <laughs> crazy thing to say. This is, um, this is, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to bring the share back up. Okay. Can you see the proclamation declaring June 19th 
you need to make it a little larger. Yeah. Okay, but we can't. We are seeing the right thing now. Yes. see that still a little more yeah that's better okay um shane i'm going to unmute you to speak to this i'm sorry i uh i think this is a little bit long for me to just read uh and i'm hoping that you're more familiar with it than i am and we'll be able to speak to it Okay, go ahead, Shane. Yeah, uh, thank you. And uh, thank you all for adopting the statement that Kyle drafted, first and foremost. Um, I think the Black Lives Matter flag is a good next step. Um, this is pretty much directly taken from the proclamation that uh, the town of Hartford passed uh, on the 9th, just a few days ago, um, naming Juneteenth, the 19th of June, a town holiday and I, you know i sent an email to eric and you know this is something that would be largely a uh, symbolic gesture uh, but it is something that i think is a gesture that is worth making right now um, and so the proclamation itself uh, talks a little bit about the history of uh, june 19th why is it an important day for us to celebrate um, you know some of the different celebrations that have happened over the years uh, specifically talks about how you know we've we've seen a lot of progress on this issue, but we are not quite there yet. And then uh, finishes up, um, you know, talking about the the Vermont State Declaration of the holiday, and then you know, the enacting clause. All of you guys signing off. Um, if you all want to read this, uh, you know, it is it is on the uh, Hartford Town website for people who are wanting to follow along. Um, but you know, obviously before you adopt it, you're going to all want to read it yourselves, the select board members, make sure you're comfortable with all the language of it. Um, I think it's something that, you know, like the similar or like the previous, uh, two action items, I think it's, it's very much a time for us to make a statement like this. Um, June 19th is, this is a pretty tame thing, I think, for us to make a statement about, you know, saying that we're going to celebrate the end of slavery, I think is a, you know, a pretty pretty unifying message. Um, so I, I hope this is something that interests you all and we can maybe look into. So it wouldn't happen, so you're, you're saying that this, this wouldn't happen for this year, this Friday, this would be for future. It would, I would hope if you, you know, were to adopt it tonight, that it would be in effect this Friday. Um, Obviously, there's not the ability to organize any Juneteenth events, but it would, yes, in the future, you know, going forward, it would uh, keep this as something that we, we think about. Okay, yeah, because um, it is uh, an important topic, and I'm really reluctant to adopt uh, something that I haven't really had time to read yet. So that's my only, my only hesitation. Same here. Brian, is uh, there are people from the audience that want to speak to this? Uh, I'm not seeing any questions right now on uh, this topic. If anybody would like to speak on this, uh, please raise your hand or indicate in chat that you would like to speak. Um. This is Kyle. I'm I'm personally in favor of adopting this tonight. I I agree that this is um, this is another good proactive step that is um, not a big ask. Actually, um, I think it's it's an important to think thing to do. Maybe we can't. You know, like you were saying that we. You, there's not enough time to necessarily um, do any f uh, anything formal um, for this Friday, but I, I'm, I know that it's um, that there are things that will be happening in town, and that um, in solidarity. And I, yeah, I think I'm, I'm very comfortable with moving forward with this. Are you moving to adopt it? I am. So moved. 
We got a motion. Do we have a second? It's the first time I've seen it, uh, Mr. Chairman. Understood. I, I can't um, to, uh, read this before. I, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you for bringing it to us. Yeah, and I'm I'm sorry. I should have uh, you know done the work of getting it. I, I basically just changed everything over from the Hartford Proclamation just a half hour ago. So I should have done that a little bit earlier. But <laughs> okay. um, yeah. things are unfolding fast. <laughs> <laughs> Lacking a second, the motion fails. Okay, uh, was there anything else under here, Brian? Um, Brian, can you go to the chat? And I, I'm just go, I'm just going to the chat and seeing seeing things um, that I think we should address. So uh, we've got a couple more questions about the flagpole. Uh, and I think that there's a few people in the audience who would like us to reopen that discussion. What's their question? Um, I've got a couple different ones. Uh, Kim Dunkley says, why can't we ask the trustees? Um, That's what we left it as, right? That's that correct. belonging for justice should our, our advice is that belonging for justice should bring this before the trustees. Right. Um, oh. uh, Shona has expressed a surprise that this is not our flagpole. Um, same with Jackie. Uh, Kim asks, uh, how would we? feel about this if we did have ownership? I guess it was Scott that asked, uh, if, how would we feel about it if we did have ownership of the flagpole? It's a hypothetical question. Uh, Cal asked if we would put a temporary flag on town property somewhere. Uh, and Rick Opperly remarks that uh, this property was the Milton Marion Prescott property. Oh, uh, yes, Marion. Uh, she put a stipulation in the, and maybe uh, Rick remembers this, she put a stipulation in the purchasing of that house for the municipal building. She gave it to us at a deal, but it had to always be available, the space available for seniors to use. I wrote that. Thank you, Doug. So what about this question? Um, if we can put a temporary flag on, on, on town property. Yeah, I would not support it, but what's the board's pleasure? Why wouldn't you support it, Eric? What's, what's your reasoning? I just wouldn't support a, uh, you know, politicizing a flagpole. That's all. For me, it wouldn't be, you know, for any flag other than the, you know, U.S. or a Vermont flag. But that's just me personally. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think I, it's clear where I stand on it. I'm definitely supportive. Yeah, I am. Well, then I would accept the motion. Uh, yeah, Kyle, if you if you want to make up the motion, I, I'm not. To me, it's a little vague on what it is with, and, and how. Well, that I'm to, I'm just trying to think where where. Um, I'm just thinking about our town properties and where this actually, where we, where we would put it. Um, so uh, we have Legion Field. We have. Um, Seems like Legion is the kind of an obvious choice. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have. 
a comment from chat that uh, Kim would like to speak. So with the board's permission, I'll bring Kim up. Uh, okay, go ahead, Kim. Yeah, it's actually Scott using- Oh, him. sorry, Scott. That's okay. <laughs> um, I've been having a bad hair night. That's why it's hard. <laughs> Excuse me. So anyway, um, Mike, I, I know it's a hypothetical question. I would love to bring this to the trustees. I mean, the flagpoles, I don't care who owns them. They're in front of the town hall. And I just want to keep this really clear, simple, easy to do. I have full intentions on bringing it to the trustees. I would also like to tell the trustees that it had support of the majority of the select board because it's, it, you know, for, for most people who drive by, it's the town hall. So your comments, for me anyway, um, I would love to have them. And then when we meet again, and it would be good to have a little bit more info to be, you know, fully informed. I can make a strong argument to get this done. It, it seems ridiculous that we would be, you know, spending money during COVID on flagpoles and logistics on where to put it when we have flagpoles in front of the community building that is jointly owned and wonky in some parts because, you know, town owns some stuff, we own the other part of the stuff. It, it's ridiculous for most people in our community to get down to this detail. So, uh, I would love to know your hypothetical view on this as a board so I can go to the trustees and push hard to get this done. Thank you. Per well, Scott's request, do we want to do a straw poll of the board members? So Kyle, instead of, did you make a motion on a particular place in town? Um, I, I was thinking that we could temporarily put it on our village green and maybe, um, it's, you know, near the bread oven area, um, and send, uh, support to the, tr you know, tell, let the trustees know that, um, some of us or all of us, hopefully most of us support this, uh, support it going up in front of the municipal building, being moved there. All right, so that's a motion? Yes. Well, the village green, yeah, the village green is owned by the village. <laughs> Sorry, sports fans. You're talking about Legion Field, I assume. I'm, I'm talking about Legion Field, which we fully own as a town. Yeah, there yes. you go. So that's that your motion to place it on Legion Field. My motion is to place it on Legion Field with the hope and intent to move it to the um, flagpole in front of the municipal building uh, pending village approval. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Did you second that? Second, yes. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all uh, those in favor? Oh, go ahead, someone. Yeah, this is Doug. I would like to, I'm certain there are properties that the town has that I think would be perfect for a flag like uh, for the Black Lives Matters flag. I, this I think is, I'd like the Nat and Kyle to think about this consider the various properties and come back to us and say if they're still in favor of this or if there's if there's another thing I think this is something for more thought I you know I was strongly in favor of, of the first statement you know this is like the, the hammering the nail home uh, and uh, I'd like to hammer it home in the right place what place do you uh, I, I hear you Doug, but what pl what like what place or do you have in mind? If I knew, I would tell you, uh, and I would offer it because I'm usually not hesitant to speak about this, but I, I don't know. Um, 
you know. Uh, Jackie has asked to for a comment. I, I believe that Jackie has, has something to weigh in on on this question. Okay. With the board's permission, I will uh, go ahead and unmute Jackie. Okay, go ahead, Jackie. Thank you. Um, Doug, I, I hear what you're saying about the statement. Um, uh, you know, um, a flag is a flag. It, 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 it communicates broadly and widely every time someone walks by or drives by. Um, it's, it's really a beacon of, of light and hope and communication. The statement is wonderful, but only a few of us will actually even read it. Um, you know what I mean? It's not like it's plastered. Um, a flag is flown for the people who live in this town, the people who visit the town, and the people who are just passing through. So I, I feel that that's why a flag is, is, is so, um, it's so impactful. Okay, Brian, do we have any other comments from the public? And, and I would, sorry, I would add to that, that that's why it's so important that it's visible and not tucked away somewhere that people can't see it. Let's see, uh, sorry, I'm looking through. Uh, Rob says that this sounds like a town meeting vote to him. On a flag? Uh, I think that was in, in comment to the Juneteenth holiday. Oh, apologies. Uh, it looks like Cal would like to speak. Okay, Cal, I'm unmuting you. Thank okay, you. go ahead, Cal. Video up here. Um, sorry. I just think, um, I don't know if Doug was suggesting, you know, putting it somewhere on a private property, maybe. Um, but I think it's important to have our town uh, stay clear about where we are. And, and, this is, and to be on the right side of history is all I want to say. Um, as far as, you know, and maybe I'm getting that wrong, Doug, I don't know, but you were suggesting maybe putting it maybe in the middle of town somewhere. Um, no, I that, but um, I, I think it's important that we that we put it up as a town in unity. Uh, I hope we can all be in unity about that. Um, so, I, but maybe I'm misunderstanding, Doug. Were you suggesting we put it up like on, you know, a, a private property? No. No, municipally owned property, town owned property. I just didn't so know. Like, Le like Legion Field? That, that could be a possibility. You could, you could put it up at the Cold Spring. You could put it up at the athletic field. So you, okay. you could put it up as you, by, as, uh, where, you, where you come into town, you know? Uh, I got you. You know, I, I was just okay. thinking sometimes extra thought generates better results. Yeah, yeah. My big thing is I, I just want us to be on the right side of history in Johnson here. And, uh, you, you know, this is a this is a pivotal moment in history. And I think we need to seize that moment. That's all. Thank you, gang. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Cal. Do we have anyone else, Brian? Uh, Walter has commented. Uh, you know, what else are we doing for other flags uh, that we might want to fly? Um, I think that's it. Okay. Any other comments from the board? Is the board ready to vote? Yes. Okay. All those in favor? Signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Aye. And the chair votes nay. Motion fails. We have uh, a roll call. Do need a roll call whenever okay. it's not unanimous. We'll go for. We'll, we'll do a roll call. Uh, Doug. Nay. Nay. Mike. Nay. Kyle. Yay. Yes. 
and Nat. Yes. And the chair votes nay. Motion fails. Anything else? With this, or are we ready to move on? I think we're ready to move on. It's a tough discussion. I really appreciate everyone who's participated in that. Yes. Yes. Uh, thanks, everybody, for, for keeping it a, a good, productive, and civil discussion. All right. Uh, our next up, we have a uh, revolving loan fund application for Jenna's Promise. Um, this has been reviewed by myself and uh, loan administrator uh, John Mandeville at uh, LEDC. And John asked that I uh, relay his recommendation um, that we make the loan for $50,000. Uh, to Jenna's promise um, uh, as requested. Uh, it would be our standard interest rate, uh, standard period, and uh, uh, they, they would provide the, the additional recommendation from John is that they would provide a personal guarantee of the loan. Uh, which they are willing to do. <laughs> and how, <laughs> that and makes how, it uh, how close does this get us to the amount we need to have loaned out? This gets us pretty close. This gets us, uh, we would need to loan out a little bit more money, but I don't think we'd even have to loan out the maximum. Again. How much more? Have to grab a calculator for that to see. Like, uh, I mean, because twenty thousand. We've, we've been getting money paid back, so our total amount out right now is decreasing uh, because we're getting money back in. Okay. Uh, but it would be about twenty to thirty thousand, I believe. Then we'd still have to loan out at some point. Yes. Okay. Okay, what's the board's pleasure on the request? So just because, and I, I'm sorry to prolong the meeting, but just because we have an unusual number of people here, um, real briefly, this is a $250,000 revolving loan fund owned by the town that we uh, loan out to entities who request for making <laughs> economic improvements in the town, low interest loans. We've loaned one out to a restaurant in town um we're mandated by law to get what something like a quarter or a third of the money out in the community at all times yes um, so this helps us in that and um obviously jenna's promise fully backed by um <coughs> by uh, the tetros makes this pretty easy and, and what is the the length of the loan term Greg, i'm going to unmute you so you can participate in the I think it was five years if I, I believe it's five years. I read it somewhere. I don't remember where it's our standard period. And I believe that's five years, but is it like 1% or something? It's right around there. It's, uh, yeah, I think our floor is 1%. Okay. But yeah, we're, we're at our, I believe that we're going to be at our flow for our floor for making the loan. Um, you know, we'll, when we're ready to sign the documents, we'll do a, a last check on interest rates and I, they're extremely low. We're two points less than the prime interest rate, uh, with a floor of, I believe 1%. Is Greg on? Yes. Yes. How's, how's everybody tonight? <laughs> good. good. How are you? you? Good, good. Getting a little tired. I tend to get up kind of early, so. I guess uh, you got what's left to me. <laughs> okay, you you have any uh, words you'd like to say about your loan request for the Jenna's promise? Well, it's it's towards the building in back of the coffee shop to uh, start with. We're going to purchase that from uh, Woodamore's, and uh, it helps us with connecting the coffee shop and gives us some more parking in the back. And um, it kind of connects well. We didn't 
legally have a right away to the back of the coffee shop as it was before. So, and we're working with uh, 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 some people that want to do a sober home there. Uh, I can't disclose quite yet what it is, but soon I, I will be able to. So that's kind of, it's going to be housing for people that, uh, you know, need, need housing and need a little help at this time. Good. Thank you. Anybody got any questions for Greg? Um, just, this is Kyle. Hi, Greg. Thanks for being here. Um, I just, so, okay. So, um, is this something that, our, I can't remember where we're at with our review board. Did this go through the review board? Uh, this did not go through the review board. Uh, it didn't go through a separate entity other than administration uh, with uh, myself and John Mandeville. Okay, okay. That was, that was just one question I had. I couldn't remember where we're at with that. Um, and then this, uh, what was my second question? Um, sort of unrelated, but Greg, where, um, where are you at with the community block grant? Uh, we presented last week, uh, Brian Story was on with us. Yep. Um, they're supposed to be giving us an answer no later than July 6th. Um, okay. It went pretty well, but they did, they, they, they missed one uh, offering earlier because of COVID. So I believe they put two offerings into one. Uh, so I don't know if that's going to help us or hurt us, but uh, it's kind of in their hands and we're just kind of waiting at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else got any questions? What's the amount? I missed the amount. 50,000. Okay, thank you. Motion to approve. I've got a question from the public when the board is ready. Okay, I, let me take the motion to approve first, and is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. And is there any comments from the board members first? And if not, let's open it up to the public. Okay, Shane, I've got you up. Okay, go ahead, Shane. Yeah, thank you. Um, my comment is just uh, a Thank you for all the support that the select board has given to Jenna's promise in the past. I know I've spoken to you about this before. Um, as someone who's in recovery myself, it is, I can't tell you how good it makes me feel to know that my community is accepting and welcoming to people like me. And, you know, this is always something that I struggled with and that a lot of people struggle with still who are in recovery is finding a place to go to spend their their sober days in recovery and i i am just so excited to know that we're going to be able to do that here in johnson so thank you thank you shane is there anyone else from the public brian i don't see anybody else is the board prepared to vote not hearing any dissent all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes. Congratulations, Greg. Yeah, thank you, folks, for all your support. Uh, it's really uh, heartfelt up here. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll have the paperwork uh, for you to sign, Greg. We'll, I'll be in touch. Thank you. Smoke Free Park. Anybody hear that tapping sound? Yeah. Not stopped. Yeah, I'm not sure where that's coming from, but I haven't been able to figure that out. Uh, okay, uh, the next up is the Smoke Free Parks and Old Mill Park. Um, so we've discussed this before, and as I recall, I think that we declined to take action at the time, but uh, Healthy Lamoille Valley is offering uh, assistance and um, 
that we are. I really thought we had taken this up, but maybe we just talked about it. I, that was how I, I recalled it, was that we talked about it, but we did not uh, choose to take any action on making any of our parks smoke free. Because I remember the discussion with the Legion Field, um, you know, some people were offended by the amount of cigarette smoke and <laughs> like. <laughs> that too. Yeah, that too. But if we if we hadn't taken it up, we hadn't, I guess. Um, I guess opening up for the was there any kind of proposal, or are you just looking for the board to uh, take action on this? I'll unmute Lisa and Jess uh, if there's any questions that the board wants to ask. Uh, but if we're and Allison is here and can speak on this also. Uh, if there's anybody that any questions that we have, but um, I don't know, Lisa uh, or Jess, was there any was there a proposal you wanted uh, to make other than putting the signs up? No. Well, in October, Jess came to a rec committee meeting and spoke to us, and we said that we would be um, in support of this for Old Mill Park and the trail there. Um, we weren't sure that we would want to recommend it for any of the other parks at this time but we were comfortable accepting the help of the signs and recommending old mill park as a smoke free vape free marijuana free facility the uh, skate park already is correct smoke free i don't believe so they're not oh. the, no so the I don't know, um, I can't speak for what the skate park went through because I wasn't there when they were determining that. Um, but the rec committee at the October meeting um, wanted to bring this to the select board at the time. It was supposed to be just Old Mill Park is what our recommendation and request were for um, to keep the youth playing sports there basically and the children's playground um, smoke free. All right, I am going to go ahead and share uh, a draft of the of what the sign could look like. This is just a draft because this does say parks and trails. So we're not sure that I don't know that we're there yet as a community to do all the parks. So speaking from rec, we're just recommending Old Bill Park. I think Allison would like to speak, Brian. Yep. Grabbing Allison here. Okay, Allison, go ahead. Hi, everyone. Wow. Well done on making it this far in the meeting to everyone. <laughs> so, um, and for, you know, considering all these substance prevention issues, as you all know, Healthy Lamoille Valley works on substance prevention, um, but especially for the, um, healthy decision making of our young people as lisa was mentioning and so there are lots there's lots of rationale for smoke free public areas um, that includes the norming that happens what kids see in those areas that becomes normalized for them um, you know and that obviously when that's smoke or vape free then that is um then they they see that as how are we modeling as opposed to others um, who are smoking or raping in an area how do we model for our youth um there's the health impact the individual health and the public health issue the secondhand smoke related issue um and vape um there is secondhand vape as well and you know vaping is is um you know a youth epidemic it's been named and uh, you know is, is a huge concern in our communities um, and we also know the environmental impact on different like, levels um, related to like to toxins um, from cigarette butts as well as the um, just cigarette butts being around. So for example, at the skate park, um, 
uh, we were in communication and, um, you know, with Casey, uh, and we had, uh, last year there was a butler um, that was put like off to the side. Jessica, I was out on med leave for a concussion, but Jessica was part of um, bridging that gap. And, um, you know, and, and however, uh, you know, obviously there are towns that make all of their parks substance free and, as we're very excited to put this forward for Old Mill and um, help support uh, Johnson with providing the signage and um, and Jessica's wonderful design work. So, and that can be, it can change however you would want it, but to, you know, to make a statement in those places. Um, I should also raise the issue of enforcement. I know that's always something that people bring up and enforcement, um, you know, you you could put a, a specific enforcement or some some kind of um, you know ticketing or something. I've seen that happen, but really it's about community empowerment and community enforcement. For example, I see a sign up, I see someone smoking, say, "Hey, excuse me, do you mind? My kids are skating at the park. My kids are playing here. I'm I'm here." You know, it it, it gives people a little bit more um, of that community. Um, you know, confidence to maybe say something to make them to make the environment um, and the law, uh, you know, um, make the environment a healthy one for all who come and um, and, you know, and keeping the air clean, like for all of our health. So that's just a little bit. I'm happy to um, answer any questions. And Jessica, please uh, jump in if you want. Thank you, Allison. I think he summed it up well, Allison. Um, but we're happy to adjust the sign. I'm reading in the the chat, um, you know, maybe having some pictures or, or something. Uh, this was just a starting place. So if there's um, if there's other other images or you know, also less signs is more. So if the you know you want a, a, something about dogs being on leashes, we could put that on too, um, because we recognize that we don't want to just fill um, a space up with signs. So. Hmm. I think it's a nice sign, just the way it is. Actually, do we have anyone else, Brian? Uh, looks like Allison wants had something to add. Hi, uh, just Go quickly. Ahead. I I quickly noticed some, um, you know, the, just to address the question about how about no smoking under 21. Um, I think that um, just back to the point of rationale of the environmental space and the health impact of secondhand smoke and vape on everybody, um, as well as the norming that anyone smoking does for other people, even peers, you know, for teens and for, uh, and, you know, seeing adults or seeing anybody smoke, I think that, or vape um, in that space, that's possible. Though, uh someone is asking now about alcohol so it could be a substance overall like alcohol obviously is not in, in this specific sign but there are towns who do choose to have substance free parks or substance free events and that is something to you know consider along with nat's recommendation for the conversation into the future of kind of thinking about you know the big picture and then seeing how the specific policies fit in Okay. Anybody got anything else? Any board members got questions for anyone? I think it's a good sign. I, I uh, also appreciate the, the bit about cleaning up after your dog because that's been a perennial problem down there. Um, so thanks for that. I guess my question would be, why would we only do this for one part? Yeah. Why wouldn't all of our parks be smoke free? Good question. Uh, I think Cal would like to weigh in on that. Okay, Cal, go ahead. Yeah, just uh, on the on the um, on the smoking thing. I mean, it is legal. And the smoking under 21 seems like a more reasonable thing. I mean, here we are, we're not allowing a Black Lives Matter flag in town. 
but we're going to ban smoking for everyone. Um, just seems like it should be an under 21 if we're going to post at all. Thank you, Cal. Uh, and uh, Jeff has remarked that he had the same question as the chair about, uh, I think that he said that when Eric, you had asked, uh, why not all parks? So just to be clear, is this, um, this is coming as a recommendation through the rec committee, is that correct? Uh, Lisa, are you still unmuted or are you? Okay, I'm unmuting Lisa again. Thank you. Um, I think that discussion had come up before and then Jessica visited with the rec committee and what the rec committee would like to um, recommend is that Old Mill Park be made um, smoke tobacco vape marijuana free and it's primarily for the um, to keep you know the environment clean down there for athletes, the athletes who are down there enjoying it, and for the young families who are down there enjoying it. And if that's the rec the recommendation of the rec committee, I am supportive of that. I mean, the, the two parks do serve different functions. Um, one's an athletic field. One's a kind of an event space at this point. Whether the policy should apply to both, I, I don't know. Um, but I, I'm willing to take the recommendation of the rec committee. Uh, I guess the only thing, the rec committee would represent only the mill park area by and large, but uh, you know, yeah. Beards Park, people be down there picnicking, you know, especially with kids, you want your kids stepping in some tobacco spit. Uh, you know, we've had complaints in the past on the Legion field for Tuesday Night Live, we allow smoking. Um, at the skate park, there's mostly kids over there. There shouldn't be any smoking anyhow. I don't know, I'm, I'm just questioning why we would I think it's a great idea. I would be very supportive of it, but why would we not include all parks? I guess that's my question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is Casey here? Uh, she, she, had, she, had a message. she had a message of what the smoke, what the skate park does. Okay, uh, Casey, I'm gonna, uh, Nat, I'm assuming you'd like to hear from Casey. If she wants to contribute, yeah. Okay, Casey, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. Okay, Casey, okay. go ahead. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, yes. go ahead. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, the, uh, the skate park uh, was tobacco free entire or smoke free entirely uh, initially, um, but we had requests from parents particularly of younger kids who uh, really had to go take a smoke break and weren't comfortable having to leave the park and leave their kids unsupervised. So we said, we decided, you know, it's not illegal. So let's ask people to uh, keep it off the, away from any of the act, actual activity areas. Uh, and we have a butt buddy there off in the grass uh, and so it's kind of a voluntary cooperation situation. Um, it, we occasionally will have signs that come and go, unfortunately, uh, about please keep, please, you know, control the, the tobacco and cigarette litter. Uh, frankly, uh, alcohol is a much more illegal alcohol, uh, you know, we, cause we are posted to be alcohol free and people disregard that pretty blatantly and it's it's very disturbing to us uh we don't have the power to police it but that's not what we're talking about right now so uh that's what's going on with the skate park currently 
for smoking. Thank you. So, so in a essence, Casey, you have like a uh, designated designated smoking area. Well, it's not roped off. <laughs> it, no. There is a butt can, a, you know, a butt buddy with, with a sign saying, please dispose of it, dispose of stuff responsibly. Um, I'd like to add a sign saying, you know, certainly restrict your smoking to around this area, please. But it's, vol it's voluntary. Would there be the same problem at Mill Park where parents of kids playing in games would be wanting to uh, take a smoke break? I guess I'm asking Lisa or... Yeah, I'm, think I'm sorry, I was thinking about that, Eric. Um, <laughs> I suppose that that could, could come up as an issue. Um, I think the... To me, the idea of the sign is more or less just if it's bothering you, it's an easier way to have a conversation with someone. Um, I think, you know, most of the time if someone's down there and they want to sneak about, it is a big place and they're going to pretty much be able to do that. Um, but if you get out of your car and there's people sitting there with, you know, a bong in the field, it's kind of easier to start the conversation of, hey, can you, you know, take that away? This is a smoke-free park. We're going to have soccer practice or my kids are here or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. is, is my take on it. Um, so at, at this time, we definitely were talked about, you know, putting a smoking section versus just making it smoke-free. And we thought we'd give um, smoke-free a try and, you know, see if there's, you know, see what happens. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Mike. Why don't we just stick to the uh, number six, proposal for smoke-free parks, Old Mill Park, and not clutter it up with other places. Uh, I, I think we're all in favor of this, maybe just adding uh, pick up your dog do or something like that. Uh, we know that there are not gonna be any park police actually policing the area there it's just going to be a sign some signs around that gives it emboldens some people if they see something that is wrong or they don't like they just say you know that smoke is bothering me would you mind putting it out we do have a, a sign over here this is a smoke-free place so I, I would just move that we just go with a recommendation um, of the rec for this one particular place this evening and move on because we still have a considerable agenda that we have to take care of tonight, Mr. Chairman. I think there was a motion in there. There is. I'll second it. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Uh, I do have a couple comments from the public if the board. Okay. Uh, looks like one person put their hand down. Uh, so I think lacking other indication, I'm gonna assume that the members of the public have had their questions answered by our discussion. Okay, any other discussion from the board? Hearing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Modified rec coordinated hours all right i'm gonna to have to mess with the sharing a little bit again let's see so in brief uh lisa and i have had a discussion about um, kind of what's going on right now with the uh, recreation coordinator, that uh, the position as envi envisioned um, was planning on conducting activities uh, that are currently suspended. Um, so far, there's been enough other things going on that we 
it hasn't been an issue for Lisa to maintain her hours and do productive work for the town, uh, but that is going to become an issue in the future. And so we'd like to kind of be proactive on uh, scheduling out a few projects and a few things for her to work on, uh, but that's probably going to that's going to result in, at least for the time being, uh, working a few less hours per week. You enlarge that? Yes. Thank you. I also uh, support this because it gives us a little bit of flexibility in our uh, handling of this that I believe we would be able to, assuming uh, everything's going well and we're reopening later on, and we have possibly having to scramble a little bit to get our activities rolling again, uh, we might be able to afford a little bit more time per week for a period uh, in the future. Uh, that this would let us schedule and use our time more flexibly. Brian, just a little background history, Brian. Is this something you and Lisa came up with or is Yes. Okay. So, Lisa, I know you're on. Um, so, but Lisa's in su in support of this. Yes. I, I um, support her, so. Yes. Okay. Um, Brian and I were talking. We were reviewing the end of year budget and looking forward to next year's. And it is looking like there's going to be a considerable shortfall of money. And so, instead of really spending my time right now building up new programs that may or may not fly um, depending on how COVID goes over the winter. We thought it prudent to reduce my hours now while we're in a slow time when we know we can't be doing um, a lot of our activities and then um, revisiting it in September and you know following the sports schedule seeing how it goes and then starting on the development of the new programs next spring and summer. So basically just postponing the summer by one year since the summer's kind of a wash right. for getting together. That was very nice of you, Lisa. Yes, thank you, Lisa. Okay, so we need to take formal action on, because we had put this position in at 24 hour per week and basically be re reducing it 12 hours for July and August, right? That's the suggestion. Um, I would add the qualifier. Um, I think Rosemary is still on, but I suspect that this would be a little bit easier for Rosemary to do the calculation for if we did not modify the share that were uh, for uh, insurance. Um, right, because she gets a, Lisa gets a certain benefits now because of working 24 hours. On her 24 hours a week. And I think that if we, you know, we're kind of adopting a modified schedule with the anticipation that we're going back to 24 hours once we can have sports and things again. Um, so I, I think that we would be have an easier time managing it administratively if we just left it even at assuming the position is 24 hours. I should go without saying. Yeah. yeah. I noticed when we uh, when we dealt with the uh, public works department and they weren't able to work, we didn't we pay them fully. Uh, this this is really wonderful on the part of Lisa, but I would just want to ask her that she wouldn't use this time to look for another job that because we want to retain her. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I know where she lives. 
find her. Yeah, drag her back. <laughs> Yeah, I, I want to be 100% clear on the record that this in no way reflects our uh, satisfaction with the job that Lisa's doing. You know, that this is, you know, Lisa has received outstanding work reports. She's done a terrific job for Johnson Recreation. She's done a really excellent job assisting with our uh, community meetings, uh, being a resource for our uh, COVID-19 emergency response team, uh, really stepping up and just being excellent in every opportunity she has. Um, so this 100%, it has nothing to do with job satisfaction, or our satisfaction with uh, her performance in the job. So what's the board's pleasure? Do you want the hours reduced to 12 for July and August, but maintain benefits at the 24 hour per week? Benefit? Yes. yes Is that your motion? motion? Doug made a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Yeah. A motion second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Don't go anywhere, Lisa. <laughs> thank you, Lisa. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank okay. you. Holmes Meadow, and I believe Doug wanted to add the TELC access to this one as well. Yeah. Yes. I think uh, Brian has spoken to David Butler and can bring us up to date on that. Yep, I spoke to uh, David Butler um, today about uh, finally putting in the access. Uh, we're at a stage where uh, our contact Noah Pollock, who's done a lot of our uh, manual, our labor and the on the ground work for our fishing and boating access and uh, the Beard Recreation Park. Uh, Noah is ready nearly ready to go ahead with the fishing access at uh, both Holmes Meadow and the Old Mill uh, area. And David Butler is ready for us to do Holmes Meadow. Um, so we are, with the board's permission, we're ready to roll this out and actually get the access stairs placed at both locations. Uh, the Holmes Meadow is going to include a sign at the end of the road uh, before it turns into the, the meadow and the lots. Um, and we'll mow a little strip along the tree line uh, to promote a walking path um, to reach the, uh, the, the, the river access itself. Um, if you recall, the, the stairs on the Holmes Meadow uh, are going to be placed right around where we had put the excavator into the river a few years ago when we were breaking up the ice. Uh, that we, as a side effect of that, we had uh, smoothed out the bank uh, a little bit and made it a little bit easier to install uh, access to the river. Thank you. The uh... In, in talking to Noah, what is going to be required is, is actually cutting knotweed or, or bamboo, and there won't be actually any steps involved. There'll be a sign there at, at where, you, where David has okayed putting, that, putting the, uh, uh, the access. And basically, we're going to be able to set, tell the public that they're welcome to go there. If you remember, we had a fourth class road that we traded to, uh, which we didn't know existed, and David said he would give us two act fishing accesses to the river and a, and a path, and this is one of those, uh, and it's exactly where Brian says, it's at the, the far upper end as you walk in, and it's, uh, I can tell you from having been there that uh, you can catch trout there. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of bait do you have to use there? Fly? Uh, I was using Bob Fry's uh, secret fly called the minky. The minky. You can use, you can use any bait, spinner fishing, uh, worms, whatever. They're loyal. 
they're okay. legal. Um, the second thing is on the the uh, this is a staircase. Noah's coming in with with his uh, crew uh, the third week in June, and they are. We have the we've been informed that the state will issue uh, Susan Baird will issue an administrative amendment allowing the installation of the the stairs on the river. The, the steps down the steep bank uh, on the river. Uh, and uh, I think that Brian has, uh, Noah furnished the application to Brian. I think Brian has submitted it for the admin, administrative amendment and the state has said they will issue it. We've already vetted that all the way through. Yep. We have the permission from the village to, uh, to go ahead. On the, on the telecom. Like the only action that's required is approval from the board for both access river accesses. Well, we have we have the one approved. It's just uh, the Holmes Meadow is what we need. Okay, that's right. We already approved contingent upon the village approving, right? That's correct. Yeah. So, what's board's pleasure on Holmes Meadow access? I move we approve the river access at Holmes Meadow. We got motion. Do we have a second? Second. second. Motion in a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor, signify saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. This is great. Thanks, Doug. Thanks. Next one, Beards Trail Access or Accessibility. Yes, the Conservation Commission would like to pursue a plan uh, to improve accessibility at the Beard Recreation Park and would like the board's support. I think we've discussed this kind of roughly in concept uh, and the Conservation Commission in seeking grants and work would like a, a more formal uh, adoption if the board is ready. And if we like, uh, Lois Fry is here and can speak to this. Well, why don't you uh, open up her mic so she can address it. Okay, uh, trying to unmute. Okay, go ahead, Lois. Well, this is a, a, a trail that we really in the Conservation Commission would love to be able to raise the money that's needed for it and have you all agree to have it installed there. Um, we have the plan, um, the working with Noah Pollock, who of course is wonderful with waterways. Um, all we need is the blessing from the town for us to try to get the grants that will be needed to raise about $7,000 for this. The Conservation Commission has approved the proposal. He thinks it's a good idea. We'll move. We have a motion, do we have a second? This is just a letter of support. Well, uh, we would be signing grant agreements for this. Signing grant agreements. And, I, mean, I wouldn't want to ask for money and, and then not have it be an acceptable item for that piece of land. Right. And well, it's so definitely that's why we're asking for permission. Oh yeah, no, it's definitely a good idea. It's, uh, is are we we're not on the hook for any um, matches or anything at this point? Is that right? Um, in the in the discussions we've had with the um, the bidder on this. Um, who, who works with NOAA on a regular basis. They mentioned that um, some match from um, in-kind services from the town for um, bringing over some rocks and that kind of thing, which had a value of about $800. But um, it crossed my mind with everything as tight as it was, since we haven't written the grant yet, maybe we could get that built into, we can raise that money as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's possible, but it, you know, an eight hundred dollar in kind seems pretty. Uh... Once we factor equipment rates, that eight hundred dollars is not a lot of time. That's yeah, somebody with a loader for a pretty short amount of time. To leverage seven thousand dollars, it seems like a pretty good deal. So, yeah. did Mike make a motion? Yes, he did. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any more discussion? Now we've got a comment from the public when the board's ready. Yeah, go for it. Go ahead. 
Okay, Scott, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. Uh, trying to unmute Scott. Well, Scott's got a pretty, Scott's question is, uh, what kind of trail is it? Uh, is it a bridge? And it's not a bridge. Um, Ryan, I can answer that. Yep. The, the, the trail will, will start in the parking lot, uh, down by the, the far end of the parking lot, uh, as you're looking at Powerhouse Bridge, and it will go down to the, the first level where the picnic table is. That's as far as it's going. It's going to go down and loop around um, and reconnect and go back up. It's ADA approved. It's all um, officially sanctioned by as a, an accessible trail. And I've envisioned it and had talked with the fellow who's doing it about having it be um, a wonderful way for seniors to get there, but also that we'd like to be able to get a wheelchair down there. And it, it will be able to do that. And that's part of having the loop around. That's so but, great. Yeah, Thank one you. of us may enjoy that someday. If we're in a wheelchair. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Any other comments? Hearing none. All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. Thanks, Lois. Thank you. Lois. Municipal office. Lois, just as she was uh, responding. I, I apologize for hitting mute on you, Lois. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up is uh, construction and remodeling projects around the municipal office. Um, our current planned construction project for this year uh, was working on the clock tower. Our history with these projects on the exterior of the building as they have so far mostly gone over budget and proven to be more complicated than expected. Uh, in the current state of budget affairs, therefore I would recommend against uh, proceeding with that plan. And I would like to instead uh, prioritize some other work that we have an easier time with uh, managing expenses on some smaller projects where we can do maybe a couple smaller projects or stop smaller projects if we're uh, concerned about how the the cost is going um, brainstorming this with meredith uh, the village has not formally heard this proposal yet either but um, brainstorming this a little bit with meredith we we're thinking about the sidewalk out in front of the building uh, as one of the areas. And then it, Eric had suggested, um, you know, we have uh, long wanted to do some work inside the building that has been difficult due to its constant use by one group or another, that this might be a good opportunity for doing some uh, work that we're normally prevented from accessing. Uh, so, First, I would kind of like the board's consent uh, that we're not going to pursue uh, reconstruction and restoration on the clock tower at the municipal building this year. Forget that. That's smart. Good. Uh, and oh, then, Doug, you both in agreement? Are we in a much worse position if we defer this? I don't think so. I think that um, I think that we have hit all of our critical areas uh, in terms of you know well, the windows especially proved to be uh, much more damaging than than we had realized before. There is some roof work that we had done that I believe is going to alleviate a leak problem we had uh, at the seam between the roof line uh, where it met the clock tower. It was not shedding water properly. Uh, 
but we improved that. Uh, so it would be a hip joint there. Uh, and I think that that's, I think that's going to be sufficient for some amount of time. Um, I would not want to kick this down the road very far, but yeah, I, I, I think that we'll, that next year will not produce any uh, substantial differences. Okay. Brian, could you unmute Kyle? Okay. Yeah, I see her. Kyle, I'm unmuting you. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, yes, we can hear you now. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, uh, did, did you want to speak, Kyle? Sorry, I didn't know if you heard that I was in support of delaying. Um, oh, okay. Okay. Thank you, Kyle. That's what we're. That's we what we're looking for. I was saying it. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, the, the main thing, the, the big thing is that sidewalk uh, because it, there's some really uneven spots there. And, yep. uh, you know, from time to time, we do have a lot of elderly people coming in to this building and they, they shuffle their feet along. And I have seen old people stumble, not necessarily on that spot, but similar sidewalks in my life. And uh, that should be taken care of probably first. And it should be dug down and, uh, you know, fairly deep and rocked and compacted with layers uh, to make sure that the frost does not move that around like it has been in the past. And uh, we should spend a little extra money to fix that and also to, to fix that uh, patio area. Uh, and I see there's a, a picnic table uh, for the patio. I mean, that's, that's a terrible looking place. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really looks dumpy. And uh, when you come into the building, we, you know, we want to put forth some kind of uh, a good uh, put forward, I would think. And we need to correct some of these problems. And also the foyer area does need to be painted. And we need to get these things straightened out. And right where you're sitting, those floors, hardwood floors, it's been over 20 years. We've never redone them. They need it bad. Well, I think the sidewalk needs it far more than this floor does. Tell you the, truth. The, the problem with that floor is we've never been able to do it, schedule it, because the building was always used so much. But right now, it's virtually unused upstairs. So this is a perfect opportunity to take advantage of that. Well, you know, they, we went in the back way all last year. Uh, when they were working on this side of the building. So it's no real big deal, I don't think. No, it's just that whole area would have to be shut down for about a week while uh, somebody came in and sanded it and varnished or polyurethane. Oh, 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 you're talking about the floor here now. I, right, I guess yeah. I was still talking about the sidewalk. Oh, yeah, no. And there's lot, not a lot of public going to the office. That's why it would be a good opportunity to do the sidewalk. Yeah, but yeah, so we're talking about doing both this year. Yeah, I mean they're both be relatively small projects, um, but you know they both need to be done as well as maybe some other things inside the uh, building that need to be spruced up. I actually do have one more thing, uh, and I'm glad I remembered. Um, before we reopen the building, the office staff has asked if we could put in a new window. Uh, for the, where they interact with the public, a uh, new service window. Um, right now, our service window uh, opens side to side, and that doesn't really conform with the advice we're getting on COVID-19 response. If you go to the grocery store and everything, they have them so that the, like a sneeze guard, it kind of protects you from face level. Uh, and you can't do that with our service window. I believe the trustees approved up to five hundred dollars to have this installed. They did. Yeah. So I, that would be a formal motion we would need from the board. That the select board would also approve up to five hundred dollars to fix that front window in the office. So moved. Second. Got motion second. Any more discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. As far as the other items, uh, Meredith's got to take them to the trustees, and I'm sure uh, both of Meredith and Brian will get back to 
respective boards and tell us what. Uh, do we want to share any particular ones that we prioritize more than others, or are we open to just kind of starting the conversation? Uh, well, you know, I, I heard uh, floors and sidewalk. Yeah, I think those are our two priorities, unless anybody's got any other thoughts. sidewalk first. <laughs> All right. I, yeah. I think you ought to price out both of them. Uh, I happen to be looking out the window of my office on School Street when Seal Miller was bringing me over a mustache cup and I watched her, I, I, she must have been 90 years old, and I watched her horrified trip on a, on a, on a, on a sidewalk, go to her, hit her head and break her wrist. You know, oh, uh, it was just horrifying and, and, and the pain, uh, oh my God. So if we have something like that over there, it needs fixing. Yeah. I agree, and um, I think that absolutely has to be made a priority. And I just wanted to say also, Mike, that the Beautification Committee has identified that that area where the um, where the uh, picnic table patio. is, the patio. Thank you, <laughs> um, as a uh, as a place we want to beautify. So that's that's in proposal right now. That's wonderful. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. I'll, I'll take that to Meredith and the village trustees. Now, are you drinking coffee? Yep. Really? No, it's just a yeah. water. You, guys, you have an all nighter or something? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what this is turning into. It's going to hold you here. Give me some beer. <laughs> okay, picnic table. Uh, the employees have requested a picnic table uh, for use out on the patio. We used to have one. Uh, it did not survive our uh, when we were doing the construction work last year. Um, we, we didn't damage it in construction. It was just once we picked it up, it really just came apart. Uh, so we're going to get a get a good one. Get a good one that will last. Uh, you I'm want to put in, uh, maybe a, a synthetic like the. Along the lines of the ones one that we have up on Old Mill Park, that that's a that octagon table is a really nice, well done table. Right. Yeah. yeah. Lisa Cruz bought that table for us actually. Well, she bought it with donated money, but um, yeah. How much was, was it? I forget. She's still around, isn't she? She's still on. Hey, Lisa, you remember how much that table was? Uh, Beth has raised her hand. I think maybe Beth knows. Okay. Uh, and Lisa's here. thousand uh, dollars is the warranty. Yeah, but it'll last for. I mean, that thing will last a thousand years. Yeah, yeah. So well, uh, probably in this time we couldn't justify that kind of expenditure, could we? Okay, Lisa, go ahead. Um, the octagonal table that's at Old Mill Park is a thousand ninety nine. Um, and then if you get a four foot just picnic table with attached benches, it's six forty nine. They did just sell us one for Old Mill Park for 600 though. Um, is that it? Six foot is 949 and then they um, go up if you get different colors and they go down if you use different materials. So that is for the poly resin material. Who's the vendor? Lamoyle Woodcraft. They're on Route 15 as you're going towards right. just past the dealership there. Wow, oh, <laughs> really nice. pricey. They're yeah. very pricey, but there's a long waiting right now. Yeah, and they're they're amazing. They deliver right down to the park and do whatever colors you want. And that thing has held up beautifully down there. <laughs> My wife wants one every time she every time we drive by, and when I tell her how much they cost, maybe I won't have to listen <laughs> to her anymore. <laughs> so the board want to approve a motion to purchase one up to a certain amount of money. It's going to be a fifty-fifty deal, right? We can ask for a contribution yep. from the village. I I'll agree. It's used by all employees. Yeah, 50 50 deal. Yeah, no problem with me. Don't put it too close to the flagpoles. <laughs> Are we going to have X's on the seat? We You're smart, Alex. <laughs> Getting late. Yeah, let's do this. But what's the amount? Do we want to do the full thousand? It seems like maybe we should do something a little less. But Yeah, me too. I don't think. Uh, 
that kind of an expenditure during these uncertain times. What's it? Give a dollar amount, Mike. Well, Lisa, what kind of a table do you think we're going to get for six hundred bucks or seven hundred bucks? Uh, the six hundred dollar one was the um, regular picnic table style, uh, you know, attached benches. Four feet uh, long. Yeah. Yeah. Now, all of the uh, this is for basically the office employees, correct? The public yeah, uses it. The public. Right, yeah. right. But I mean, all of our office employees would right. like to sit together when they can. Someday. Yeah. And yeah. We need to have a table that all of them can sit at comfortably. With so that small one wouldn't do it. And you socially distance. Yeah. You got a social distance problem. No, no. I'm talking about after the social distance there, problems. Over. If you get the weather resistant pine, it is significantly less expensive. It's 359 for an eight foot table. Well, maybe we ought to go with that. I think Johnson Works has leftover uh, blue and white paint if you want us to paint it nice and pretty like the ones on the green. <laughs> I think that sounds pretty good. <laughs> How about the town share at 300 bucks? Second. So you made a motion that the town supports by a picnic table and our share up to 300 bucks. Right. Okay. And the second, any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. And Brian, we still have Donna on, right? I mean, if she ever had questions on what we're making for a motion, she can raise her hand or whatever. Yeah, Don is still on. Okay. And I, I've seen her in chat tonight, so. Okay, good. You have to excuse me for a second, Mr. Chairman. Okay. You coming back? Uh, the next item probably is no longer relevant, is it? Uh, Leia Kilvanyeva was on. It looks like she is off now. I could address uh, that. Can I call on you for this one? Yeah. Uh, unmuting Charles here. It's moot. Yeah. Because it's gone to the governor, right? No, it's up for third reading on tomorrow. Tuesday. Tomorrow. Okay. So it's moot. Okay, so it's it's almost out of the Senate. Okay. Yeah, uh, there was a concern that this was slowing down and then that ended, it, it went ahead quickly. Okay, yeah. good. Light Industrial Park. All right, so with our Light Industrial Park, uh, we've made a couple final adjustments to this. Uh, I'm expecting, uh, I know I've said this a couple of times, but uh, I'm expecting to submit our final application uh, in the next few days. Perfect. Wow. Keep our fingers crossed. Yeah. No, it, when, would we, when would we hear? Uh, within, I think it's within 60 days. Perfect. This is so that's not the end of the process within 60 days. It's not that and they give us an award, but we would advance through the process in, in within, I believe it's 60 days. And the application avenue that we're pursuing now is the faster of the two uh, avenues that they had available to us. Good. So, so again, this is the Northern Borders Grant? Uh, this is not the Northern Borders Grant. This is, uh, sorry, the EDI, the Economic Development Authority. Uh, they have loans for infrastructure supporting businesses, and we're filing this as a response to a disaster, specifically the ice jam that we had a few years ago. Uh, our claim is that uh, by building more economic backbone for the town outside of the floodplain, 
and area affected by that disaster, we make the town uh, more resilient and sustainable to disaster in the future. And the amount that we've asked for the grant? Is uh, about a little over a million dollars. And that million. builds all the road, the infrastructure, the... The road and utilities. Electricity, sewer connection. Yep. Water. I don't believe it includes internet utilities, but everything, all other utilities. All right, that's up to Charles. Yeah. Good, anybody got any questions on that? And Seth helped out a lot with that. Seth has been instrumental in, in this, about getting this over the finish line. Um, you know, I, I really appreciate all of Seth's, Seth's work as, uh, you know, it's been a long and complicated process and having his assistance has been very valuable. Great. I asked the extra questions and I, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'll have more, but um, I've gotten more feedback from folks just that uh, along the lines of transparency and what's going on with that property and how many, you know, what, what, what's the grant status and so on. And I think we, we kind of, it's always at the end of these meetings that this comes up. Um, and uh, so we're all kind of spent and we just kind of go through it and just get the brief update instead of hearing a little bit more about the full picture and reiterating the whole thing all over again. Um, so anyway, just to put out there that there's there's still some, some of that concern out there about transparency and what is going on and why did we ever do that? Yeah. So noted. Okay, Brian, next thing is some contracts. Yes, uh, we have the FY21 ambulance, the uh, NEMS contract, FY21 sheriff's contract, and the FY21 uh, GIS. GIS contract. Uh, and I would seek the board's permission uh, for either Eric or myself to sign them. What's the board's pleasure? So move that those expenditures have already been approved, correct? They're yeah, already they're approved right. and there's been no changes to any of the contracts. That's right. So it's a kind of a no brainer. Yeah. Uh, just so. authorizing somebody to sign it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We're just yeah. now executing the contract that we had planned on. You need a motion, Mr. Chairman? Yes, make a motion. I'll make the motion. What are you making the motion? Who to sign? You. Okay, we have a motion for the chair to sign. Do we have a second? Second. We got motion and second. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Uh, the Clay Hill UVM, that's sort of already been talked to or you got more to add? Not a whole lot more to add, just that uh, we're expecting the grant agreement for that one any day now. Uh, so I would like the board's permission to execute that grant agreement. What's the board's pleasure? By all means. You so moving? I've uh, done too many tonight. Give somebody else a chance to move something. How about you, Doug? You start that one. I'm waiting for you. <laughs> I'll move yeah. that uh, Brian Story be authorized to sign the uh, grant agreement, the contract with uh, with UVM for that culvert installation. Yeah, well, I should be signing the agreement with the state of Vermont. It, it's coming in, uh, the funding is coming in as a local roads program. Okay, I would so change that. With, uh, and Brian, you're going to have to unmute Kyle. So she yeah, can I see her. Motion, make motions or seconds. Okay, there you go, Kyle. Sorry, I don't know why that keeps happening. Okay. <laughs> I think it's Brian. Oh, okay. Yeah, blame it on Brian. <laughs> Did you have anything you wanted to add while we uh, got you on the line here, Kyle? Yeah. <laughs> no, this sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? Is there a second? Oh, no. Yeah, we need a second for Doug's motion. Second. Uh Kyle, a second. <laughs> Any other discussion? All those in favor of saying aye. 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 Those opposed? 
and fireworks. Somebody needs a fireworks permit? Yes, we have an application for a fireworks permit uh, from David LaFray on uh, 2403-100C for the 4th of July. Um, they have a completed application. They've informed their neighbors, have letters signed by their neighbors. It's a fully complete application. The potential issue that the board will have to consider is uh, this did not come in uh, as early as our ordinance requests. Uh, so they'd have to be granted a variance on that. Okay, what's uh, July 4th? Any hours? Uh, any description at all? Or is pretty yeah, I can give you a little more detail. Start time at 8.30 and approximately uh, 10 o'clock ending time. Um, okay. Oh. Rain date of July 5th, same time frame. A lot of fireworks. Is there anybody, is this a professional display or is this? It is not a professional display, but they are following uh, good guidelines uh, of the NFPA. Uh, they're going to have a spectator area 100 yards away from the launch area. Uh, that'll be designated as a taped off area. Um, the fireworks will be stored, uh, stored on a pallet away from the launch area uh, during the display. And they do have a, they will have a firefighter in attendance. Oh, wow. Oh. Sounds like they got it pretty well figured out. Yep, they have a plan in for um, cleaning up uh, their area and uh, unexploded shells will be submerged in water until the following day. Uh, Where okay. is it? 2403 uh, Vermont Route 100 C. Oh, that's way up there. Yeah, that's that is really far up there. So do that we sound like to... I'm sorry, go ahead, Eric. I was just going to ask, do we have to notify the sheriff and the fire department or something like that? Uh, they have to. They have to, okay. After we approve it. Yeah. Well, first off, we have to approve an variance, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah, you would have, you'd have to grant them that you're going to hear their permit despite, uh, you know, that it, it's come in and there is less time than you usually request. I move that we give them a, a variance for that. Mm -hmm. We got a motion to authorize a variance. We have a second. Second. Motion is second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Uh, I just have it. Now uh, we've got to roll call. Hmm? We have to do a roll call. Okay, you got to do a roll call. Uh, Kyle, how do you vote? Aye, yes. Nat, how do you vote? No. No. Mike, how do you vote? Yay. Doug, how do you vote? Yay. Motion passes. For the variance, now we would be looking for a motion to approve the fireworks permit. So other than the uh, variance that the board has granted, the permit is in good order. We had an application once where the, they didn't control the landing area. Do they control the landing area here? They have a plan described for the landing area. It's, uh, I can, not very easy to see uh, through the video and I didn't have enough time to scan it. Um, 
but they, they do have a planned launch area, landing area, and uh, cleanup. Okay. So I'll just explain. I, I've I've never felt that our ordinance on this was um, uh, very smart, um, and that it um, it just wasn't. It didn't take in. I never liked how the ordinance was was worded, and I don't feel comfortable approving these things unless it's a professional fireworks display. So that's me personally. It's not a huge objection, but I won't be voting in favor. Matt, do you think we ought to tighten it up or something? Yeah, I mean, it was years ago that we that we approved this thing, and I didn't like it at the time. Um, and it, I would need to be refreshed on it exactly. But there was language in it about about the town ensuring the safety of the of the display or something of that nature um, and i just felt like it, we just aren't in a good position to do that um, you know i say that so i, I want to vote no on this um, i don't want to squelch anybody's fun um, so i you know i'm not going to try and lobby anybody to vote against it but it's just uh it sounds like the, it's pretty well thought out application but i just don't think that it's uh something that i can sign off on as safe because i don't know enough uh about it maybe we need to tighten that up a little bit eric yeah I, maybe we should look at it um at some point I don't remember. It was a while ago when we wrote it, and and I do recall what Nat's referring to that there was some reservations about even approving any firework permits because of the liabilities and, and such. But that was some of the requests we were getting were more in the village area and, or populated developments, and I remember that was a concern of mine. But this one's seems like it's uh, well managed you are still held harmless correct well we can be sued for anything that's true yeah. but i just at that at the time we passed, at the time they, we passed that ordinance, take responsibility for it but you know if we've got deep pockets <laughs> you know they'll come after us well at the my pocket watch is deeper than the town's probably. Yeah. At the at the time that uh, we passed that ordinance, I just resolved that I wasn't going to vote in favor in, of any of these because I didn't feel comfortable with it. Huh. So, put the uh, proposed fireworks permit before you, the board. Does is there a motion to approve? I would move we approve. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. No second. Any more discussion? My reason for this is that I have the same exact hesitancy. I didn't like that, but it's our ordinance, and our duty is to process this under our ordinance. Uh, I think that the, the problem with the ordinance, I believe, flowed out of the state statute uh, on this, if I recall. I and mean, this is just drawing down something from the same place you guys are trying to. And I think that our duty to our citizens is to apply our ordinances and process our applications under that. That's a good point, Doug. Very good point. All mm -hmm. good points, and we probably do have to revisit this ordinance. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Nat. Yeah, thank you, Nat. Why don't you start on that at your earliest convenience? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Any more discussion? All those in favor of signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Okay, we'll do a roll call. Kyle, how do you vote? Yes. Yes. Nat? No. Doug? Yes. Yay. Mike? Yay. Motion passes. Okay, that's all I've got on my list. Is there anything else that we've forgotten? Nope, that's all I've got. Did I miss the industrial park? Yeah, yeah you yeah. slept through it. <laughs> I slept through it. Oh, you, you stepped out for a minute. I stepped out because I thought Leah was going to speak. Wow. <laughs> Elliot, more we can do. It's earlier. 
<laughs> no, I stepped out before she spoke, not because it, you know, I thought she was going to say something, but I should have realized her, her name was not on the list anymore. But yeah, the briefly, the industrial park is moving ahead. Uh, and I, I had uh, thanked Seth for, for his help. Oh, oh, I can't believe I'm yawning. Um, <laughs> it's been a long night. I certainly thank everyone. Um, we actually had a very good attendance tonight, too. Yeah. I think, I think it's a very good argument for when we can return to public meetings, to in-person meetings, still, have, still having Zoom. I believe there are collateral benefits later on for people being able to appear to know what's happening here. Totally agree. Yeah, yep. completely. Okay. Not managing everything, Brian and Eric, it's, it's, it's hard to, to navigate it all sometimes. Especially in this world. Yeah. In the, like, the Zoom okay. world. Yep. Okay, thank, thank, you. thank you all. Have a nice evening. Thank you. you. Too. Thank you. Good night. We stand Bye. adjourned. Oh, Donna, we're adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>